And we are live, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us on this Wednesday, the 6th day of July, 2016. I do want to try to take a lot of phone calls today and not just sit on top of the calls or let individual callers go too long. I really want to give longtime listeners who don't want to sit on hold and who want to just quickly sound off on Hillary uh, setting the precedent that there is a ruling class that is the new royalty and is above the law. You can welcome the sound off on Obama, uh, calling her diligent and the best person to be the president ever. Hours after the FBI director talked about how horrible she is and how negligent she is. The FBI director looked like a deer in the headlights yesterday. I went back and watched the 15-minute speech he gave, and he looked scared to death. Absolutely scared to death. Uh, and then gave a really bipolar statement where he comes out and she's absolutely horrible and lied about everything, but prosecutors wouldn't indict her for this or wouldn't go to the grand jury with this. What? The lying to federal officers alone, there's, there's like 15 cases of that. The ordering her girlfriend to cut the top off and other staff of, of the stuff that said top secret and secret. I mean, you have her. Just tampering with those documents is a freaking felony. And then it hit me when I was watching the nightly news last night from home with, uh, it was Leanne and David Knight doing a segment. We're going to play a clip of it coming up where they talk about the fact that, and this is the one thing I haven't covered, and it's the biggest issue out of all of this. And every time I think I've covered every angle, I realize I haven't covered half of them. So I thought of a few more after I saw David talk about this and Leanne. They have persecuted whistleblowers and the press unlike anyone in history. I mean, we've covered that, but not the fact that they use the handling of secret documents and the handling of national security documents and national security information as the main way to persecute people when it's not violating national security to expose illegal spying or parallel construction by the DEA or informants framing people uh, or a Fox News reporter talking to an undersecretary of state about do you believe North Korea really has multiple atomic bombs? You should be able to say, yes, we believe they have it. Of course they have it. So you've got just the absolute misuse of it to persecute free speech and whistleblowers, and then you've got Hillary engaged in spades, a royal flush of corruption, and nothing's being done here. So that's one angle I haven't hammered, and it just, I did get nauseous. Uh, I mean, I don't just say that. Everyone I know said they got a bad feeling in their stomach yesterday, and I really went from being really happy yesterday morning, long weekend with the family, out at the lake with friends, Rob Dew and his wife and kids, my cousin Buckley and his wife. Pat Riley was out there with us with his wife and friends. We had a great time out on his boat, out on neighbor's dock. But I tell you, then I just started really realizing this is actually a defeat for the globalists because they're having to really show how corrupt they are. And even liberal media is turning against them now and, and, and really just going, this is sick. In fact, this is something that finally has some of the Zombo left going, what? Look at all the people they prosecuted for far less, not just Petraeus. Uh, I think they jumped the shark on this one. We're going to come back, get into all the news, play some powerful clips. We've got the enemy in our sights. The global fight against the private corporate worldwide tyranny known as the New World Order is going extremely, extremely well. Time is running out for the globalists. Their entire program is being exposed. Not just their plan to take control of the planet, its resources and populations, but their end game, their final solution, their eugenics planetary program is now beginning to go mainstream. And I sit back with extreme pleasure seeing our talking points against the globalists and our research against the globalists coming out in literature, in fiction, in nonfiction, in media, in sports, in culture, in news. I love hearing terms that I coined being used 
by the mainline conservative talk show host. I love hearing the even controlled left adopting my vernacular. And it's not just my worldview. It's the globalist worldview, but from a perspective of someone against it. So I want to just say something out of the gates before we get into all this news today. It was disheartening not to see Hillary Clinton get indicted. She certainly deserves it. They've persecuted the press using these uh, secrecy laws. That's one of the biggest reasons I think she should get in trouble and one of the biggest reasons, one of the biggest points that hasn't really been covered properly. There's an article out today that actually gets into that from Wayne Madsen, Infowars.com reporter. He'll be joining us at the start of the third hour. Joe Biggs will join us from the border with breaking news there. And Pastor Manning's with us in the second hour. We're going to have open phones with Pastor Manning as well. But I want to say something. The only way the globalists can win is by divide and conquer. Now, if you are a black person who has been discriminated against or been harassed or, or been pulled over for driving while black or whatever, you have some real issues and real reasons to have a chip on your shoulder. And there's reasons white people have to have chips on their shoulders. And there's reasons Hispanics have and all the rest of it. But all of these issues are played up to be much bigger than they really are. So the larger world can be basically obscured while we're down here in the smoke fighting with each other. And I know you know that. But we know they have bots. And we know they have hired technicians and they have operatives that cause a snowball effect on message boards and comment boards and in the culture to push a narrative of everyone fighting with each other. And then the central government comes in and plays the part of the organizer, the, the referee, to stop that infighting. But I'm going to just say this and I'm going to move on to the news. I don't care what color you are or where you live in the world, or what your religious background is when it comes to this question. The globalists are targeting you, whether you're a Jew, whether you're a Christian, whether you're a Muslim, whether you're a Hindu, whether you're a Buddhist, whether you are a Zoroastrian, whether you are a devil worshiper, whether you are an animist, whether you are a Rosicrucian, whatever you supposedly think your worldview is, the globalists have a plan for you, and they've been testing weaponized media, weaponized food, weaponized medicine, weaponized water, weaponized air, and it's declassified. A lot of it isn't, but just what is declassified is so mountainous. The secret testing that's been declassified in every country of the world. It's crazy. And again, they use divide and conquer to control this. Almost every time they come out and announce that they tested weaponized polio or weaponized syphilis or weaponized uh, bird flu or weaponized Zika or weaponized limes or sterilants in the tetanus shots, it, they always end up announcing that they got caught doing it in Africa or in some Central Asian country or South America. And then it's just kind of in the news. Oh, we apologize for injecting the Tibetans. Or we apologize for injecting the folks in, say, Chile. Or, or Hillary was two years ago. She came out and apologized to Peru for injecting the population. She didn't do it, but earlier people did. But she, she apologized as the State Department had, for our government secretly injecting Peruvian llama herders, not hurting anybody with syphilis. It was the women that trusted the government would go into the clinics and get the shots. I mean, what type of freak evil people pull crap like that? Do you have any idea how painful syphilis is, how degenerative it is? It's basically microscopic worms that start eating your brain and other organs. That's what Lyme's disease is, is weaponized, tick-borne syphilis. That's another little treat they gave everybody. But let me give you a little news flash. In the really declassified stuff you can pull up, they tested on white communities, Hispanic communities, they tested on everybody, folks. 
But when they announce it usually or declassify it, it's always how they're doing it to the Pakistanis or the Peruvians to kind of play to the scientific elitism that's in the left of, oh, we're just controlling population, wink, wink. I can't tell you how many times I've had leftists go, okay, yeah, we saw your film Endgame. Yes, there's some covert population control going on. There's too many people. What are you going to do, Mr. Jones? And I'm like, well, you should go out and blow your stinking head off yourself or slit your wrist in a bathtub. Oh, no, no, no. You've got to oversee the playing God and poisoning everybody. And the truth is, they're like a cat playing with a mouse. They're not really reducing population. The globalists and the Royal Commission brought in worldwide policies in the 1950s. This is all declassified to cause a ballooning population because they wanted that to actually threaten the West and later be able to cause global conflict to bring in the current world government we are seeing forming. Then they said they will mop everybody up. Everything you've seen so far is testing on people and getting ready. So I want to tell the white racist, the tribalist, the black racist, the Hispanic racist, the Asian racist, all the little cult tribal groups, okay? Let me explain something to you. When you play along with your little race game, whether the left is controlling it or the right's controlling it, and God, it's hard not to because the whole political system's like this, you've got to address it. So you, you, you play into it whether you want to or not, but, but when you consciously play into it because you think you're winning because you're in your, your group and you think that's what's going to empower you, you've let the globalists win because all of humanity is under attack by the New World Order for all intents and purposes. According to the Kissinger Group, there are 6,000 global minions that work for less than 20 families. And I, again, had Rothkop, head of the Kissinger Group, on. He, during the break, he goes, you're one of the 6,000. We're ready for you to join us right now. Fly to New York next week. But it's going to be off record. I said, John Harmon, you just hear that? Oh, no, this guy's trying to, this guy's trying to buy me off. Oh, now, come on, Alex. I agreed to come on here. I thought you'd be smart enough. Come on, let's come on. Have a friendly, you know, I'm going I'm to leave. I'm going to get off here. Have you already been on about 30 minutes? I said, no, no, come back, Rothkop. But that's just one case I can tell you about because the guy didn't say up front, this is off record until he wanted me to go to New York off record. And I said, no, it's not off record. You screwed up, buddy. Because as a journalist, if somebody tells me off something off record, if it's not a criminal activity, I can't ever talk about it or I blow my entire capability to get information off record. Be like if I was a cop, a detective, and I was just exposing who constant confidential informants were all day. I wouldn't get any information very, very quickly. And most people are so flattered to have the elite try to get them to join them. You know, I was just talking to a um, to Steve Pachenik last week, and, and, and most of the talk was off record. This part of the talk wasn't off record. And he was breaking down a bunch of different angles and stuff and talking about CIA penetration of the army and how they're trying to deal with that and the rest of it. And, and, and I said, I talked you know, th that wasn't off record. But he just said, listen, Alex, you don't have to worry about them coming after you for the time being because there's so many people in the power structure that aren't part of this larger anti-prosperity you know, prosperity takeover who appreciate what you're doing and you are seen. And what was weird is I've been told this by a bunch of other people. You are seen as America, like, like you're an archetype of America and a piece on the chessboard now as a player. You're now part of the establishment. You're just a good part of the establishment. And I'm not up here bragging saying, oh, look, I'm part of the establishment because you're not the only person that's told me that. You have to understand, it doesn't mean I sold out to the establishment. You, as our listeners and supporters, are really Alex Jones. I'm just a symbol, a focal point of that, like Ron Paul talked about. It wasn't Ron Paul. It was the movement. He was just a focal point, just like Pat Buchanan was or a, or a Donald Trump today. Because we aren't selling out, we will become the establishment if we start winning. So many patriots think, oh, we're just going to lose and hide in our basements and wait for a civil war. And, oh, my gosh, we don't have any power. No.
if we act like winners, have the truth, promote prosperity, promote free market, promote true unity, there are a lot of people across the political spectrum that really don't want to have a civil war, don't want to have war with the Russians, and don't want to be a bunch of scumbags. And so all I'm telling people is, I never compromised and sold out because I knew history. I wanted to really change things and really be a good person in my life. And so far in 21 years of fighting, we have broken through as the info war and are now recognized as one of the main pillars left of Americana. That's how we're seen by the good guys in the government. We're seen as America. We're what's left. I'm going to get into all the Hillary stuff in the clips in the next segment and take your phone calls. I want to get back to what I was talking about in the last segment right now, just to illustrate the fact that everything the mainstream media does is to try to act like people that are aware of world government, aware of the globalist plan, are a bunch of fringe nut kooks that think flying saucers are going to land in their backyard any minute. And that just doesn't work anymore. Because the truth is, we are facing a private world corporate government that's unelected taking over, and we're going to force that debate no matter how much internet control there is, no matter how many people they try to lock up, that genie's out of the bottle. So I'm just trying to announce to listeners that InfoWars and our small organization has already caused the world government plan massive problems because of you, the tens of millions of listeners that are out there spreading the word and taking action. And so I'm not going to let it demoralize me to look at that witch Hillary and all the crimes she's committed and the persecution of the Christians and funding ISIS and Al-Qaeda and Benghazi and Obama and the Fast and Furious and just the you know Obamacare and the scams and all the rest of it and, and, and knowing how racist the Clintons are and just knowing how phony they are. The fact that Democrats didn't support her, the fact that the grassroots didn't support her. The fact that we couldn't hardly find any Hillary supporters, even in L.A. On, on primary day, it was like eight out of ten were for Sanders. At the polling places, most of them were for Sanders. But she still won because she stole the superdelegates. It came out in the news that, that CNN and AP had had a meeting the day before at a, at a home with the wealthy superdelegates who were just appointed by the party. And that they decided Hillary was going to win California. And that was on the news the next day. Oh, we had a meeting. We decided you go ahead and go vote. And you're like, well, that shows we're under horrible tyranny. But at least it's out in the open now. They've never had to sit there and openly ignore the popular vote and openly admit they're ignoring it. it, it it's so naked. They can't hide it anymore. They're, they're having to openly steal stuff at high noon. They're having to have Hillary be above the law and have the FBI director come out and fall on his sword for her and for Loretta Lynch. So there's no way this can just go on and on and on because her own people don't support her. Yeah, they'll get all whipped up into fervor and, again, Democrat versus Republican, Pepsi versus Coke, divide and conquer uh, tribalism, same stuff we talked about earlier. Sure, they'll do that. It'll work for a while. But it's not going to work forever, ladies and gentlemen. And so that's the positive news I'm trying to get at here is that as an average person out there who's just working hard and, and trying to take care of their family and trying to have a decent life and trying to be a good person, you may feel demoralized sometimes seeing all this bad stuff going on. But I'm telling you, I'm somebody who's on a lot of radio stations and TV stations, and I'm somebody that gets demonized all over mainstream media, and I'm somebody that reaches 20-plus million people conservatively. It's like 26, 27 million people every week, half of that in the U.S. And all I get is my dinner bought for me, and all I get is pats on the back, and all I get is even trendies and, and people from foreign countries and every race, color, and creed supporting me. I wear obnoxious Make America Great Trump hats downtown, and, and, and liberals laugh and love it. I've seen a few that get mad by it, and, and I just wear it to, to, to practice not caring what people think and, and to really test things. But as a public figure and someone who's been successful in breaking through in the, into the political discourse, I can tell you that freedom is the most popular thing in the world right now, and liberty is rising, and the, quote, conspiracy culture of not believing known liars and studying how the world really works, 
that is growing. You know, they created like a quasi-racist, weird, kooky, infighting, government-manipulated conspiracy culture when the Internet started really getting big 20 years ago that was pretty much government-run, about half of it. But the Internet got so big and so many people, listen to me, this is, this is key, got online with blogs and their own videos and articles that the feds couldn't get them all to infight anymore. And so we basically transcended that the last five years, the trolling and the infighting to a great extent, probably 90% of it's been transcended. And now there's just mass awakening happening. It's beautiful. It's very, very beautiful. We've taken the internet over. We're winning the info war, as Hillary said. They're losing. And it's a wonderful time to be alive. So let me just give you the good news. And I'm not doing a pep talk here. I kind of got down about the Hillary thing, because I really, in retrospect, have thought about it. We're making a tyrant act like a tyrant. So congratulations to all of you out there, all of us human beings, wanting justice, wanting liberty, unified in our love of human empowerment and open free culture and our red blood. All right, I want to run over some clips, cover some news, take your calls. We have several guests joining us. I, I probably should get Larry Nichols to pop back in today, too, because he was on Friday. And he said Hillary will not be indicted and Comey is going to come out and say there isn't enough evidence to do it and exactly what he said happened. And he also told me off record that a high-level government official told him of the next big bank that was going to be announced to go down this week. When he told me that off air, I went and Googled it and uh, it was not in the news. It is in the news today. So I've got Kit Daniels who just notified me of it, uh, get printing the article for me right now. So I tell you. Uh, Larry Nichols is dialed in, folks. He is certainly dialed in. He's right about 95% of the time. And he says they're getting ready for a total financial collapse. They're just trying to push it off until Trump gets in to blame him. But, I mean, if Trump gets in and a month later the whole economy collapses, is the public that dumb to actually think Trump did it? I don't know. In 1929, they had some nationalists get in that were doing better trade deals for the U.S., and then they imploded the stock market and blamed them. So, you know, this has been done before, and history certainly repeats. It certainly rhymes. Finishing up with what I was covering earlier, and CJ made the point, the, the real trolls aren't successful causing all the infighting anymore and turning the culture of questioning government into just a big mindless infight. Uh, but the, the bots are out there spewing racism, spewing divide and conquer from all sides, and, and people need to just be aware of that and move forward with reaching out to other people, warning them about globalism, and talking about the alternatives of a true free market society. Capitalism and open free market creates the thousands of choices, the hundreds of different designs of automobiles, many of them affordable, the incredible housing, the incredible medicine. Corruption comes in and then tries to consolidate control and tries to have government pick winners and losers crony capitalism, which uses grassroots socialism to keep the public stagnant and domesticated. And they admit that. The, the Bilderberg Group came out this year in a public press release. That, boy, I thought it didn't exist. New York Times, just eight, nine years ago, said I was insane. It didn't exist. They actually said I was insane. didn't exist. They said I was in a parking lot in Virginia, stumbling around, having a full schizophrenic meltdown. It said... Believing men in black cars with black sunglasses were following me. This was a film review of a film crew following us. They had armored cars, Secret Service, Marines. They were aiming MP5 HKs at us on video. This is in the film. And the New York Times said that I was having a schizophrenic meltdown. That'd be like if you were at the Super Bowl and the Goodyear blimp was above you with a Coca-Cola ad and everyone sees it and then the, and the news just says, no, you didn't see a blimp. That's the level of stuff they're engaged in. I would get on elevators at the hotel we were staying at five miles away and they would have giant Marine Corps officers now, later on, there were Marines get on the elevator with me and basically start threatening me. We had them come over to our dinner tables and, and say, hey, Alex, let's attack the State Department tomorrow. I guess that would give them some jurisdiction to come after us. I'd be like, oh, oh, oh really? And then we had these we had these journalists with us, and they're like, hey, I think those guys are cops. I go, oh, really? You think they're cops? 
as I was sitting there eating my hamburger, laughing at him. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. It's just so ridiculous. It's so ridiculous that all we were doing was showing the secret meeting that nobody went. Hillary and Obama went into it. After she was there, the, the, the next day she comes out and says she's not going to seek the nomination anymore. Remember all that? And the media for a day is like, where's Hillary? Where's Obama? They've disappeared. We were there. Because, you know, we're delusional. The New York Times said so. Imagine, again, how it preys on its audience, on its readers, who think they're really getting the big inside scoop from the New York Times. Toll-free number to join us, 800-259-9231, 800-259-9231. Oh, guess who did link to our stories written by Paul Joseph Watson and our photos of the Secret Service and the armored sedans and the diplomatic plates and... The Marines flipping us off. DrudgeReport.com. First, to help take, kind of like the Drudge Report was like the bow and the arrow and the guy firing the arrow, but InfoWars stories were the, were the arrow. And, and now, notice how the worms turn. Brexit, global government in trouble, world populations waking up, nationalism rising, Bilderberg out in the open. Oh, but I, I digress. <laughs> Bilderberg, that's how my brain works, came out. With a press release a month ago, remember we covered it, and said, here's what's on our agenda. And of course, this is only part of what was on the agenda, but here's what's on our agenda. We have a prize-winning economist coming to speak to us about the precariat and how we're going to, we made everybody poor on purpose to control them, and how we're going to put everybody on welfare by law worldwide controlled by us to make sure you don't get too uppity to control populations for coming civil unrest. Exactly what we said their whole project has always been. They now put press releases out. And Zuckerberg comes out in the New York Times a month or two weeks ago. Let's pull it up. It's two and a half weeks ago. And says, here's the headline. Mark Zuckerberg covers up his webcam and you should too. No, no. And here's why you should too, if memory serves. Mark Zuckerberg covers up his webcam, and here's why you should. Oh, there it is. Mark Zuckerberg covers his laptop camera. You should consider it, too. Nice test of my memory. I, I really flummoxed that one. I used to have a photographic memory. I'm 42, and my brain don't work as good as it used to. Still works really good, but it's not photographic anymore. It's like photographic pre-35. I remember everything before that, like I, I'm an elephant and everything after that. It's kind of nice to start losing a little bit of your memory, though. <laughs> as the body just slowly numbs itself, you know, easing you into getting older. Isn't that cute? Isn't that sweet? He warns you about surveillance. Look at his little, his little vampire teeth. He loves you and your family. There's articles today about how they openly are controlling the election and bragging they can throw the election. But here's the toll-free number to join us, 800-259-9231, 800 800 Two five nine ninety two thirty one. What do you think about what's happening? What do you think about what's unfolding? Now, Silicon Valley elites buying huge amounts of land for secret compounds. We have the nouveau riche preparing to seclude themselves from the general public with double walls, floodlights, security compounds, bunkers, and of course, guardhouses. <laughs> and by the way, those are just their staging grounds outside major populated areas to their escape zones. Where they have underground armored redoubts, luxury compounds on top, and airfields able to take wide-body aircraft and, of course, helicopter pads. You think Zuckerberg and the folks at Google and Apple and everywhere else, not just Facebook, you think they're... You think the technocrats are doing all this because they just feel like doing it? No, they are setting up a worldwide meltdown of control. According to Silicon Valley Insider, the Nouveau Riche are buying up, yeah, this is in mainstream news, but Paul's writing about it, up huge amounts of land so they can build private compounds to seclude themselves away from the general public. And then it goes on with the London Telegraph reporting on it. Yeah, Paul might want to add a few of my videos to that article where I've been breaking it down and warning people br br briefly. And, and, and I'm going to play a few of these Hillary clips and go right to your phone calls. Uh, briefly, we are extending the sale of 20 to 40% off on the super high quality, full spectrum of storable foods. 
at InfoWarsStore.com. 24% off. Survival Shield Ace and Iodine X2. This is just for emergencies. It's just the good halogen. It blocks the fluoride, the chlorine, the bromide, the bromine, all that. At least it has in my body. It's pulled it out, changed my life, helped me lose so much weight. But unfortunately, that's selling out. Been a long time since X2 sold out. We try to stockpile it. But people are really taking advantage of this sale. In fact, they're taking more advantage of that than they are the food. That's a close second. Uh, so I thought I'd have to end the sale because of the uh, food producers having trouble keeping up with demand, but they're not. They're, they're doing fine. This ships out like days after you order it, totally fresh. But no, the Survival Shield Nation on X2 looks like it will sell out in the next week. Might be a month or more until we get more. That's unfortunate, but we're going to keep the sale going until there's just a little bit left, and I'll try to keep some back at the regular price until more comes in. But you want 20% off Survival Shield Nation on X2. I'll take advantage of that today. 20% off Alexa Pure Water Filters. 20% off Alexa Pure Air Filters. This was just going to run to July 4th, but people are taking advantage of this. It's helping fund the operation, and I just love specials. So it's the Independence Special running through next Monday, but then it will end. 20% off all shortwave radios. We're expanding this. 20% off all non-GMO survival heirloom seeds. We have a giant spectrum. And by the way, we offer seeds at such low prices. When we offer 20% off, which we contractually, that's the most we can do, in some cases, we're making like 10% on these seeds. And I'm not complaining. I love to have some lost leaders. Like when we sold the Hillary for Prison Church at $5, I think we made a dollar on shipping on those. After we calculated out the labor, the, everything. So, I mean, we're selling them at $19.95 right now to fund putting aircraft over the DNC and RNC, saying Hillary for Prison. For espionage, you name it. So please buy those at full price. Help fund the, air, the, the aircraft we're going to put in the air. InfoWars store.com and for life.com for the nutraceuticals the extended ex independence day sale is a great time to support the real tip of the spear when it comes to the fight for liberty worldwide your support makes everything we do possible from exposing hillary clinton to fighting for the constitution second amendment you name it visit InfoWarsStore.com right now and secure your independence with these mega specials before we are forced to take them down and yeah i mean if it keeps selling like this i'll have to take down the x2 because we have people that sign up for auto ship and they get 10 percent off additional for that i should add and you get free shipping on orders of fifty dollars or more. I forgot that part. Uh, so we have to always hold. We're not. We don't sell out of stuff now. We always hold back enough to fulfill auto ship and to fulfill new people that sign up for auto ship. Uh, but so I will have to pull it very very soon. The Survival Shield Nation Iodine X2. But whatever you do, with all the things happening, we've gone from it being a possibility you need storable food and water filtration and and and, and preparation to a probability to. A virtual certainty? I mean, I hope that there's a way to have a soft landing. The whole world's melting down right now. We're kind of like one of the last guys standing. We got big problems here. Growth rates of 0.8% with cook numbers. All the other crazy stuff. Crime rates are starting to go back up despite the Second Amendment that held it down for a while. As gun proliferation expanded the last 20 years, crime went way down. It's starting to tick up because, you know, criminals and other people, you know, they get hungry. Stuff's going to happen. So that's what's happening, InfoWarsStore.com, and thank you all for your support. You're making everything we do here possible, and thank you for your prayers. And even if you don't buy the products, that's a win-win. Super high-quality nutraceuticals, super high-quality storable foods, uh, you name it. I mean, life-changing stuff like Super Mel Vitality, Child Ease, that's a 30-something-year-old top seller at Whole Foods and everywhere else. It's, it's a well-known brand of uh, just a whole, I mean, it's like 50-something herbs concentrated that, that really just, it's good for adults, too. I never even plug that. That's just one of the top named products in the country we private labeled. About a third of our stuff is famous brands private label that allow us to do that. The rest of it's our own proprietary over the top systems. So that's the bottom line. That's why everything's so effective. That's why everything gets, you know, five stars. It's, 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 it's why all the people that are obsessed with nutraceuticals love us. They don't even like the show because it's just the best stuff out there. InfoWarsLife.com. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. All the great longevity products that also endorse and support when you buy it at InfoWarsHealth.com. A uh, portion of that proceeds goes to fund the InfoWar. Plus, you can get free shipping there with AutoShip. Get big discounts. You sound to be a distributor as well. InfoWarsHealth.com. You can call and ask questions or get more info at InfoWarsHealth.com on the phone numbers that are there on that site as well. Okay. Uh, that said, I want to start going to some of these Hillary clips, and then we're going to go to Lamar, Sean, Corey, Daniel, Maurice, and others. And we'll just continue with calls right through with Pastor Manning joining us in the next uh, hour. Also, a powerful clip from the nightly news last night. Prosecutor explains how Clinton got off. Uh, Hillary above the law. John Bowne report is extremely powerful. I'm going to try to air that later. Um, Obama turns into a stuttering mess again while talking about Trump in North Carolina. 
uh, Hillary Clinton versus James Comey, email scandal supercut. Let's let's play that one first, just to show how they're contradicting each other. Uh, Hillary, you know, said that she never even got hacked, even though it was admitted over a year ago. So stuff like that. Here it is. He called Hillary Clinton and her aides handling of these email servers extremely careless and said in that news conference possible hostile actors may have gained access to those emails. Uh, basically, this was a political indictment of the way she handled her email. It is an indictment of a source without a criminal charge. That is a severe, severe slap at the way Hillary Clinton was running that server. But still a lot of difficult details for her team to grapple with today. I think this is a very hard day for Hillary Clinton. It was extraordinary. There was, in his world, words, an extremely careless uh, culture and attitude within the State Department, uh, that is not good for Hillary Clinton. That has been Secretary Clinton's main line of defense, that she never sent anything that was marked classified at the time. And of course, as you point out, Director Comey said that's just not the case today. They found that hostile actors likely gained access to her emails. In, in some ways, that was in, in some ways the most chilling, one of the most chilling parts uh, of the press conversation. She has been saying for more than a year now that she never sent or received anything that was classified at the time. And his analysis uh, completely disputes that. This is quite a reprimand of her and the way she has handled this by the FBI. It discounts all of her explanations that she has made for the course of more than a year as to the security of this email system. I think that's going to be keep lingering questions about her judgment, her trustworthiness. She does not have a clean political bill of health. This cloud is not going anywhere. And that's even her own former minions. These are Democrats all contradicting each other there. Let's go out to break with this clip. This is media shreds Hillary Clinton after FBI report on email conduct. See, they're already imploding for defending this so long. They now figure out they've got to go with the, the huge awakening that's happening. So even their own controlled media isn't going with this. It's so dirty. Here it is. I did not email any um, classified material to anyone. There is no classified material. 110 emails in 52 email chains have been determined by the owning agency to contain classified information at the time they were sent or received. I provided all my emails that could possibly be work-related. Several thousand work-related emails that were not among the group of 30,000 emails returned by Secretary Clinton. I thought using one device would be simpler. She also used numerous mobile devices to send and to read email. There were no security breaches. It is possible that hostile actors gained access to Secretary Clinton's personal email account. It was my practice to communicate with State Department and other government officials on their .gov accounts. The hostile actors gained access to the private commercial email accounts of people with whom Secretary Clinton was in regular contact from her personal account. Um, no doubt that we've done exactly what we should have done. They were extremely careless in their handling of very sensitive, highly classified information. People will be able to judge for themselves. We cannot find a case that would support bringing criminal charges on these facts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. To be clear, this is not to suggest that in similar circumstances, a person who engaged in this activity would face no consequences. Americans will find that, uh, you know, interesting, and I look forward to having a discussion uh, about that. All right, let's be clear. We set up our country. We won major wars against the British and other empires without sending journalists to prison for, quote, leaking secrets and with simple codes that were handed person to person. So much of this national security state claiming that it's keeping things secret for our security is about keeping the criminal activity secret. We've had a shadow government since 1947. And the fact that they've persecuted whistleblowers in the press using these different secrecy acts, and the fact that the media has gone along with this even as they've been persecuted, really shows you how much trouble we've gotten into. But now to have her 180 in the face of all this, and claim it's okay what she did when she violated the law openly, uh, again, has really opened a lot of people's eyes, and that is exciting. Now, there's another angle to this, and that's that this is a diversion from larger issues of the dollar being printed like it's going out of style, uh, the Chinese preparing for war against the United States, NATO's trying to start war with the Russians, the West funding ISIS and Al-Qaeda, 
attacks on the press, uh, expanded spying domestically, the national debt being run up, accelerated deindustrialization, more and more regulations to shut down what's left of U.S. industry, the dumbing down of our children, the borders being open, unlimited people with different uh, immune drug-resistant diseases coming across the border, the government admitting it's been ordered by the Lord and Savior, Barack Obama, to quote Jamie Foxx, uh, being ordered to let them in, a crime against the immigrants themselves. We've already dehumanized Americans, and we're supposed to pay for everything and do everything, but what about the people coming in with TB and scabies and bubonic plague, for heaven's sakes, and the norovirus and everything else? I mean, this is really a vandalization of the country, an attempt to bring it down, an attempt to bankrupt us. You've got to ask, why are the globalists doing that? I'm going to go to your phone calls now, Lamar and Sean and Daniel and Maurice and Corey and many others. Let's talk to Lamar. Thank you for holding Lamar. Uh, says a former DEA analyst uh, on classified info. Give us give us your take on this then. Hey, Alex. Uh, yeah, I mean, this, this whole thing is just rigged. I mean, it's pretty obvious, you know, that she broke the law. And uh, for us little people, you know, simple analysts like myself, uh, we, we would be in jail. Uh, I had a, a situation where um, some people were killed in Juarez. Some, some of the listeners may remember a consulate employee and her husband were murdered in front of their children. And then a, a third person that, that was separate from them was also murdered. Oh, and, that's a famous knew, case. That's a famous case. And the DEA really responded, right, and killed a bunch of the cartel. Well, yeah, I mean, they kind of did after the fact, but it was, uh, you know, too little too late at that point. Um, and, and I, you know, I knew through a uh, certain involvement that I was in that it could have all been prevented in the first place. And when I raised those concerns. Go ahead. Are you there? That was really weird. He was driving a truck. Hello? Call back. Uh, Lamar, are you still there? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, your phone cut out for about five seconds. Start over. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, the DEA responded uh, too little, too late. You know, um, when I raised concerns that it could have all been prevented, uh, you know, through some of the resources that we had, um, instead of my chain of command dealing with that and addressing those issues, they proceeded to just harass me and, you know, kind of, you know, harass me out of a job. So the, 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 the irony in the whole thing is my last week I was placed on administrative leave because uh, I copied my unclassified contacts out of Microsoft Outlook to take with me. Wow. So you took the unclassified contacts, but they still came after you. I've got the case up. Was this the case that was in 2010? Yeah, that's right. Yep. And, uh, yeah, and so they put me on leave, full pay and everything like that to finish out my last week. At that time, Bradley Manning was really big, and I joked around, They, you know, they must think I'm the, ne the next Bradley Manning or something. But, you know, now I I'm saying that instead of those resources being used to illegally spy on me for no reason, maybe they should have been watching Hillary Clinton, uh, you know, email top secret SDI material from her bathroom. Uh, at her house. Well, sure. I mean, take Colonel Schaefer. He exposed the fact with Stratus Ivy and Able Danger. He was running the Army unit that could have killed bin Laden twice, was ordered to stand down. They tried to go after him criminally for using his colonel cell phone, his lieutenant colonel cell phone, to call his wife. It was something like $60 when he was authorized to do it. I mean, I mean that's like saying he was stealing pencils or something. This is the games they play, but look at Hillary. Well, I mean, separately. Separately, it's been all over the news. They persecute the press and government whistleblowers for exactly what you're talking about. So, so that's m the point I was making: is they use this to persecute people that are innocent. They use the secrecy to 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 to, to keep corruption in place uh, and, and to cover things up. And then when Hillary, though, openly engages in what I think is espionage, it's supposedly okay. That's the only true purpose for the whole security state right now is to, you know, uh, compartmentalize the globalization that's going on so that the patriotic people still in the government don't really know what they're working toward. And, and should they uh, step over the line, you always can be caught in some kind of silly violation that they can use against you if they want to. Sure. Now, my opinion is she's still going to be held accountable. And uh, I believe they're trying to slip in Bernie Sanders. I know that sounds crazy, but that's, I, I think she's still, she's going to be just such a, a marred candidate. That, oh, you that might be right. Because yeah. he hasn't completely stood down yet. Separately, though, 
looking at this um, and, 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 and the whole history of this, in my experience, though, this type of persecution of people in the government has only gone to wake them up. I used to support body cams on cops till I figured out, wait, I would want to be surveilled like that. Plus, they'll just use it to nitpick the good people and then uh, defend the bad ones. That's what I mean, because as soon as the globalist and George Soros wanted body cams for cops, I was against them. Well, you know, that, that's a whole separate issue, but the, the use of uh, classified material to persecute people, like in my case, when I said I'm going to go to the EEOC and file a complaint, uh, they said, okay, well, here's a list of the stuff that you cannot mention in your complaint. So they took out every Phone cut out again. They took out the go-ahead, Lamar. Lamar, I don't want to get any. Uh, Lamar, your your phone's cut out again. Can you hear me? He died. Uh, Lamar, uh, if, if you are who you're saying you are and you sound credible, send us an email info. I don't want to know anything secret about the DEA, but it'd be interesting to talk about that case because that was a well-known case and talk about what is public. And then if you have been a whistleblower want to go public, we've had some of the biggest on from Thomas Drake to William Benny, uh, you name it. So uh, one of those whistleblowers. Wayne Madsen's coming up. He says the NSA is mainly to keep the government in line. All right, we are talking about Hillary Clinton. We just had a gentleman saying he was formerly of the DEA and was persecuted. All I know is that's in mainstream news. They persecuted the DEA, the FBI, the CIA, all these agencies. The upper controllers have much of the NSA and, and, and other spy grids pointed at the government to make sure the compartmentalization continues to carry out the globalization. That's what the whistleblower was saying. The compartmentalization is used to keep good people from knowing what's going on to advance globalization. It is a technotronic takeover system. We're taking your phone calls about this right now. I had a Pastor Manning joining us and more. News. Sean in Utah, you're on the air worldwide and Mellon, Costa Rica and others. Welcome. Hi, uh, Alex. Thanks for having me on. Uh, I got a comment and a question. My comment is... Uh, Five years in the Navy and now working for a contractor, all the classified information handling training that I've received, I've always been taught that it doesn't matter your intent when you're handling classified information. If you mishandle it, you mishandle it, and you're in the wrong. So in my mind, it, she's wrong. Hillary's wrong. She mishandled classified information, and she should be punished for that. And that's my what the law says, and that's what the law says. Yeah, and that's what we've always been taught. But five years in the Navy and now working for a government contractor, when we handle classified information, there doesn't, you don't have to prove intent if it's mishandled. It was mishandled. And by the way, uh, especially in your military, you can tell folks about that training. That's not a secret. If there's people, even in, you know, uh, at your office or on a ship or whatever, trying to get in to get the material, you've got to destroy it or fight to the death to keep them from getting it. So it, it, it goes beyond you're not just supposed to mishandle it or sell it. You're supposed to defend it. Yes. And with deadly force if necessary. Well, all I know is they use the secrecy. 95% of stuff, according to all the experts I've talked to in my own research, does not need to be classified. They classify basic procedures. They classify news stories. They classify all sorts of stuff to keep from the public. Or to not let the military itself talk about it. I mean, Washington Post articles get, quote, classified, you know, by the CIA. There's millions of them, reportedly, different articles been classified so they can say, don't talk about this or don't allow this to be shared on computer systems. Uh, but then separately, oh, Hillary Clinton, you know, she can meet with the communist Chinese hundreds of times when she was co-president with Bill and give them all sorts of secrets. I mean, she should be beyond prison. And again, I don't wish any harm against Hillary Clinton. She's a horrible creature. Uh, but, I mean, at a certain point, if you or I got caught doing that stuff, we'd be given the death penalty, uh, Sean. Yeah, and, and bare, the bare minimum sent to Leavenworth. Well, let me tell you, you know foreign governments are on your illegal server. You're using it as a drop box. She's not stupid. Okay, that's espionage. And everybody's missing the boat. I'm telling you. She knew for years she's not stupid. She was putting all this secret stuff on there selectively. Knowing a bunch of governments were on there, there's two reasons. It was a secret program to leak disinformation or Hillary Clinton was selling data. 
Now, I hate to float a cover story for them to say, oh, it was a secret, you know, disinfo thing. But, you know, they do stuff like that. That's why during World War II, they broke the code for three years, but wouldn't tell, you know, the, you know, wouldn't let us win most battles because they didn't want the Germans to know we'd broken the code so we could win the, you know, key battles. And that's a really evil Machiavellian thing to do. But uh, that's what they did. And I guess it worked. But uh, what's your view on that? Uh, yeah, uh, she could have been selling it. She could have been doing whatever with that information. But I'm wondering how much of this uh, FBI commie coming out with what he said is a distraction from what Obama might be trying to do his last few months in office. I agree. He's coming after the guns. He's still got the borders open. He is jacking with the currencies. He's starting a bunch of wars. Yeah, we got to be watching Obama while we're diverted, you know, with this Hillary. You are the resistance, my friends. As we broadcast worldwide, I'm your host, Alex Jones. Thank you so much for joining us. Larry Nichols, the consummate Clinton insider, came out last Friday and said they will not indict Hillary. And he said it a month before that and a year before that. He said the whole email thing is a distraction from all her other crimes, her persecution of the press, Benghazi, Fast and Furious, her girlfriends, the communist Chinese connections. And he was proven correct. He's going to pop in for like 10 minutes sometime in the next couple hours, probably towards the end of this hour with Pastor Manning riding shotgun with us. I do intend to continue with your calls with Pastor Manning, Mel in Costa Rica, and uh, Maurice in Virginia, Daniel in Florida. Corey in Ohio, Margaret in, in, in Oklahoma. I, I love having Dr. Manning, who's a radio TV host in his own right, kind of co-host once a month with us for an hour and give us his, his insight on things and uh, what's going on. Um, there's another article in London Telegraph, also in the LA Times, uh, that all over the country, elites are building big armored compounds, mainly the technocrats of, of Google and Microsoft and Twitter and Facebook. And uh, the headline is, The Wolves of Silicon Valley, How Megalomaniacs in Hoodies Become Tech's Answer to Wall Street. And Paul Watson reports on that on Infowars.com, how they're getting armored redoubts, storable food, you name it, because they are honchoing for the governments the incremental collapse. They're able to predict the future with mass movements. They're able to trigger revolutions. That's in the news today with mainline tech experts coming out and political scientists saying with multi-billion members, the biggest country on earth is Facebook. Its dictator is Mark Zuckerberg. That's a CNBC headline from a month ago. And he can throw the election because a large portion of the public are trendies and they will do whatever they think is cool. And whatever the bots, whatever the fake friends and most of their friends on Facebook, the little isolated folks that may have 10 or 15 real friends and then 10 or 15 fake friends they don't even know are fake. It's the next level of the Nigerian scam where you send $500 to Prince Abubu, he gives you 10000 Give him 5000 he gives you, you know, a million, but the million never comes. Well, now you just have fantasy friends, just like Ashley Madison. I told folks years ago, I said, that almost all that stuff is fake bots. I've seen guys literally go, look at this hot girl. She wants to go out with me. And I'm like, yeah, but that's a bot. That is the craziest stuff. And it, it, it's just a total culture of fraud. So there's those of us that are somewhat immune, somewhat awake to the scams, the manipulation, the great delusion. But then there's a lot of folks that aren't, especially young people, raised up in it. Young folks are either really awake right now or they're really dumb. We're seeing a, a major split here. So we're going to talk about that with Pastor Manning. We're talking about what's happening in the economy. Uh, Deutsche Bank is uh, plunging right now. Eurozone rocked by British exit. Now George Soros bets $100 million on German bank collapse. You think Lehman Brothers was big? This is going to be huge. We're going to be talking about that. We've got uh, a former NSA whistleblower and Infowars.com reporter Wayne Madsen joining us to talk about all this and so much more. But here's Hillary Clinton and Obama persecuting the press and members of the government for blowing the whistle on corruption, using the very same laws Hillary now says she's exempt from, and the FBI director coming out looking like he was scared, looking like he was a deer in the headlights. I've watched a lot of his press conferences. He he didn't normally looks at the crowd. He was kind of looking up and looked. And first he indicted her and how horrible she was and how you know inept, and then, but she's not going to get in trouble. 
but you will if you do this. Wow, don't try this at home, kids. This was unbelievable. So he's always got a very interesting angle. And I'm not just saying this patronizingly. We have a lot of guests on that are really astute. That's why we're, they're on a lot. We don't just have a bunch of people on. We have people that I've found to be very accurate, very astute, you know, on target. Manning always has angles I didn't think of that turn out to be game changers. So we'll see with this plethora, because I, I don't talk to him before the show. I just throw this stuff out there, and we'll see where he wants to go first. He's with uh, Otla, uh, one of, a successful church fighting tyranny uh, for the last three decades there in Harlem. He successfully helped uh, boycott and uh, began to shut down uh, the dawn of that area. Al Sharpton, but I'm not going to go over his laurels here today. Uh, just that you should visit his website that we have on screen if you're a TV viewer, radio listeners. Just go to atla.org, A-T-L-A-H dot O-R-G. I'm Alex Jones with Infowars.com. So, Pastor Manning, I've thrown out in the last five minutes a lot of topics. What would you like to tackle first, or you got a curveball for us? No, James Comey, uh, director of the FBI, actually, actually will be Hillary's uh, private State Department. And what I mean by that, Alex, is that she set up her own private email server, meaning that all communications to her from any other source around the world, whether it was about, about ISIS, about Putin, or about the UK, or about Muslims, or whoever, had to first come to her server. Now, that was not the appropriate protocol. We all know the appropriate protocol, protocol was for all information to come into the government server, and then she disseminate that information to the appropriate person, whether it be the Pentagon, or whether it be the illegal president, Obama, or others. So what Hillary effectively did you got to give her credit for being uh, as, as shrewd as a rattlesnake on this one. Uh, she now controls information over the past four years of her Secretary of State uh, tenure that the government does not have privilege to. And when it was discovered that she had this and a lot of stink was made about it, she deleted a ton of emails and then scrambled all the others. In other words, Hillary had her own private State Department. She only allowed the Pentagon, she only allowed Obama and others enter information that she did, deemed them worthy or had a need to know. And that's the thing that Comey did not discuss on yesterday. Wow, that's why I love having you. Clearly she was using it, as I've said, as a drop box. 33,000 right. 33, are missing. Absolutely. But the Absolutely. spy is Hillary because she's the one getting the data, to then broker it out regardless. And absolutely, it's all the missing emails. It's that she bypassed the State Department itself, right. hijacking the Department of State. Wow. Absolutely. That's exactly what she did. And who knows what information she has? Who knows whether the world would be in a much different state now? And we know the Clintons have always been blackmailing people off the stuff they got 20 years ago. And oh. Now, oh, my gosh. Wow, it's even worse than I thought. Yeah. And, 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 and so the fact that she was able to do this, get away with it, who, who knows what information we could have been privileged to? Who knows uh, how many you know lives crazy, have Manning? been crazy, I mean, I'm not just kissing your butt. It's true. Nobody else is bringing this up except you. And what an angle. That is, that's it. She had her own State Department. Absolutely. And then and where's the missing emails? She stole data. Yeah. And, and, you know, and the other thing, Alex, is that Comey said on yesterday that were at least uh, they were able to piece together during their reconstructing of the emails that were dumped, trash, or deleted, that 110 of them had been classified, a certain amount top secret, classified, et cetera. Uh, but, but there were 33,000 emails that went through her system. Now, just in general, 33,000 emails, when you think about it, coming to the Secretary of State, and only 110 of them, 110 ratio to 33,000 that were considered top secret, or those were the ones that they were privileged to, and in that, that none of those were alleged to have been violated. The other insult that he gave us on yesterday was that though she were, had created her own State Department, her own Pentagon, her own source of power, her own presidency, that her email server was never hacked. I mean, come on. And anybody, she sent you an email. You and her may have been conversing about something that you were aware of, or Wayne Matson or Paul Watson may have been aware of, and you were communicating about it, and you thought 
that your communication with her was tight with the government seal upon it. And, 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 but, but you were never hacked as well. It was ridiculous, the things we heard on yesterday regarding how they whitewashed, in fact, whitewash would be a nice word for what they did for Hillary to say to her, you got the power, you ran the United States in a certain way, Obama ran it another way, and we're not gonna trouble you. We're not gonna make you force up the information that you know. And we're not well, that really is what's happening, whether it's Bill Clinton or whether it's Obama, she just attaches herself onto a presidency and then operates. She did that under Clinton. She ran her own White House separate, kind of like Dick Cheney did with uh, Bush. This is a, a absolutely. Yeah, that's exactly what she did. Exactly what she did. And he was he had to Alex Obama had to bring her on either as vice president, which he was not going to do, or as uh, secretary of state. Because if you go back to the, the feeling during those days when he finally won the election and every last one of us knew that they took it from her. They took the state of Florida. They took the state of Michigan from her. They bamboozled the American people. The media. Absolutely. Said, Stay there. Pastor Manning, we're coming right back on the other side. Pastor Manning's our guest. This is a short segment, long segment, coming up with more news and your calls. Mel, Daniel, Maurice, Corey, Greg, and others. Uh, piercing angles on that, uh, Pastor Manning. Let me expand on that in this question. Why do you think the FBI director did that? Looking at the different power structure, we know the Clintons and the Obamas don't like each other. Hillary's come out and said now she wants L Loretta Lynch to continue on. Uh, why would Clinton force his way on her plane in that in that James Bond villain meeting on the tarmac? I mean, it's like they're trying to rub our face in it or they just don't care. What's going on? Uh, well, I, I, they absolutely don't care. That's for, for sure. Uh, but Comey had to do that to protect the integrity of all the other people going all the way back to the uh, Supreme Court decision regarding Obamacare and Lieutenant uh, Justice Roberts. Uh, finding a loophole to uh, to to cement an illegal program against the American people and Obamacare, but also, uh, you know, there's no proverb. Oh, what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. And quite frankly, James Comey, in order to hold the position that he holds now, must play ball with everybody else. That is to say, we've been tangling a weave. Of course, politics has always been politics, going back to Woodrow Wilson back in the, the days of trying to establish the League of Nations. But since Obama, Alex, we have seen an uptick, in fact, a tsunami of political corruption like we've never seen before. And quite frankly, anybody who's in politics right now is a part of the corrupt system and protecting the, 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 the interest of the corruptors. But right now, I'm ready to go out on a, on a limb now and say, what Donald Trump is saying in one regard, that Hillary is the most crooked politician to ever run for office. He's absolutely right. And we need to think about it in this regard. There has nobody been as corrupt as Hillary is right now. And she's holding the, 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 the power over all people, including James Comey. So in order for him to maintain his position, whatever that might be, he had to do what he did, but we can look at Benghazi. There's no, Obama got away with a lot of stuff. You and I talked about that eight years ago, Alex, about Obama, the birth certificate, the whole issue, you know. But nobody has gotten away with the kind of illegal things going all the way back to white war. And Pastor and Manning, Foster. going back to Julius Caesar 2,000 plus years ago, 2,050 some years ago, he wrote about corruption. People don't get it. They start corrupting on purpose to get others involved. So now they control the whole system. And it looks like they're finally hitting that critical mass where the whole top of the structure is corrupt. Right. Everybody has been manipulated into it in the belief they're keeping America going too big to fail. But in truth, they let the globalists take over by allowing the corruption to get to this level. And, and that's the other thing, what the globalists, how the globalists are playing into this process. And, and, who, and people are told, listen, you want to eat bread? You want to live in this nation? You want to avoid uh, going to jail or going to prison? Listen, Alex, if the FBI decided right now to investigate me on anything, they could put me in jail they, if they wanted to do it. I, they could, and, and then I'd have to prove that I'm innocent. Yeah, they can indict uh, a ham sandwich. I mean, they could just absolute, say you gave a false statement. Absolutely. So it's a matter of whether or not you want to play ball 
and 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 Americans and still Americans are still eating. You know, we're still fairly. To sure, but degree. Hillary now knows she can go for broke. What do you expect her to do? We're going to break in a minute and a half. If she well, gets in, what does she do? Uh, it's going to be chaos like you've never seen before. Uh, she holds the power over a lot of people. I think the first person you're going to see fall and expose is going to be Obama. And if not, if he's not first, Alex, the the first the group that will fall will be the African American or the black people. She hates them. They kicked her in the teeth, and she has not. I, when I look at her and I see her interacting with Black Lives Matter or when she approaches very black uncomfortable African American people, she's very uncomfortable. Alex, she hates them. They kicked her in the teeth. They spit well, and on before her. that, back when she was co-governor and then first in, in the presidency with Obama, I mean with the Clinton, she said we got to make these black people heal. Yeah, and so I think that you're going to see you're going to see chaos, eruption. Uh, upon black people and also on Obama when she comes to power. And there'll be nothing anybody can do about it. Nothing anybody can do about it. We'll be right back with Pastor Manning. Uncannily uh, got his finger on We're the pulse. On the Your phone calls. The Empire's and on Nichols. the run. We're going to cover some other news stories. Take your phone calls, your questions, your comments with Pastor Manning. And then we've got Nichols popping into Rod Shotgun with us about five minutes of the next hour because he predicted last week that uh, Hillary would not be indicted. I don't even know if I should even play the clip. I mean, everybody heard it. Uh, we're going to he hear from him briefly what's what's coming up next. Oh, by the way, uh, Nico, one of our producers, head producer, just asked me, hey, you didn't cover Nigel Farage resigning yesterday or play his, his resignation speech. And, and I meant to. He's really the leader of free Europe. Like, you, you could say the, the United States used to be the leadership of the free world. The president was the leader of the free world. I mean, we weren't perfect, but we stood against, you know, communism and total corruption and had due process. And the little people had the same rights as the big people. But he was asking why I haven't talked about Nigel Farage leaving. I, it just fell through the cracks. Uh, I hope he's just taking a rest. But I remember when he used to come on as a guest, I'd talk to him during the breaks and he would just say, oh, I'm so sick of all this. He wasn't a complainer. He just wanted to go back to private business. He didn't like what he had to do. He just didn't like EU bureaucrats coming in and shutting down London businesses and things. That's why he got involved as a businessman who'd never been in politics 23 years ago. And I think we need more Nigel Farage's to stand up and take action. But kind of like George Washington, after he served his terms, just left. Uh, I just don't think Farage's job is done, but I understand why he went ahead and bowed out because it's tough battling globalists. Believe me, I think about doing it all the time, but the problem is they're not going to go away unless we beat them. So we're going back to Pastor Manning here in just a moment and your phone calls. Before I go any further, we've expanded and extended the July 4th sale. We've added non-GMO, heirloom, open-pollinated seeds of the super high-quality variety, 20% off of the 14 different brands we carry that are the very best out there. We have a huge seed center. I set out to make it the most extensive and, and, and high-quality, lowest-priced out there. That's 20% off. In some cases, there's basically no profit with that uh, lost leader. We're expanding it to all shortwave radios, including crank power, solar power, uh, you name it, and a bunch of other preparedness items. And 20 to 40% off all of the InfoWars select storable foods. When I say select, that's just the name of the brand. It's, it, it isn't just select brands. It's, it's select food. It's the entire My Patriot Supply catalog, private label by us. We can sell it for lower prices than anybody else can. You can also buy My Patriot Supply, the exact same food right next to it on the site if you choose to and your purchase funds this operation. You get free shipping on orders of $50 or more and 10% off additionally when you sign up for auto ship on things that you need to reorder like Survival Shield Nation i x 2 which by the way, you might wanna sign up for auto ship because we always hold some back so uh, that we never sell out of that for folks that are on auto ship because we are set to sell out. This had happened in a long time as so we try to stockpile it. Survival Shield Nation Iodine X2, the good halogen, uh, research the iodine conspiracy, research why they want us deficient in it, uh, research how it's the opposite of fluoride, the good halogen, research why it's so important. And if you already know how great it is, give it to friends and family and support the broadcast. That's 20% off, and I'm going to keep that sale going until we're right about to sell out and just hold some back for the folks that are auto ship. Infowarsstore.com or Infowarslife.com. Take advantage of that today. We have the all-new design, similar to the last, but, but uh, to the last collector's edition. Uh, but it has a, a red Infowars.com on the right shoulder and legalized freedom Infowars.com on the back. Hillary for prison 2016 on the front. That is for sale, 1995. 
I sold a lot of the other ones at five dollars at cost. I need to raise money to put aircraft over the RNC and DNC. We've already signed the contracts. And it's going to cost me, because I was going to do just the RNC, now I'm doing the DNC. It, it's going to cost me $65,000. And I think if I sell, I think it's something like 20, if I sell like 5,000 t-shirts in 1995, that should pay for most of it. So get those today. Please support the broadcast. I'm all in this year. I'm spending everything. I'm not even going to. I am, I am set this year, don't even take a profit. That's my goal, is to be able to hire the new reporters, put everything in, get the camera people, uh, more writers, more reporters, and just put our full fight in 2016, because it's so critical. That's what we're doing here. In the past, I'd hold back some money for war chest, backup money. I am even digging into that right now, because I can just spiritually, at a gut level, feel that's the right thing to do. And so we're all in right now. We're expanding in the face of the globalist and hope Providence will carry us the rest of the way. So I want to thank you all for your support. Also support Pastor Manning and the great work he does. Check out all of his information at atla, A-T-L-A-H dot O-R-G, Pastor James David Manning. I, I want to uh, go to some calls here, sir, and see what their questions or comments are for you and myself. But other points that you'd like to make about what you expect to happen in the future and uh, other things that you're looking at right now. I, I'd, I'd like to respond to Nigel Farage uh, in terms of his stepping away from the leadership of the UK at this present time. And what I want to say um, is whether or not we want to track or the the last time the UK has been hit with a, a major terrorist attack, when you right across the English Channel, you've got several attacks both in Paris and in Brussels. Um, and was Farage, and I, I consider him to be a noble person, he was defeated by a Muslim as mayor of London, but, and this is a question, I certainly don't mean to cast asperges on him in any way, but I, you know, the, the ISIS boys are, could have said, we'll let England go free of terrorist attacks for two or three years if you do not lead an opposition movement against uh, the uh, 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 try to get. Uh, well, I know he almost died in a plane crash. I mean, I know he doesn't talk about it, but he gets mega death threats. And I, yeah. I, I mean, so, th th there's actually an article about that that they are threatening to kill him right now, and that his family wants yeah, him to and step so down. Did did he did he did he did he get something such as be noble? We will not bring any terrorist attack to London soil if you'll step away from opposing us. You know, the uh, the, uh, the 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 bombing in uh, in Istanbul at the airport. And a Muslim nation, one would wonder why are Muslims bombing Muslims? Was the same thing in Baghdad with the Shiites and the Sunnis. I was about to say, we saw ISIS attack five different targets over the weekend, and mainstream right. media would not even say Islamic. Right. Obama, Obama won't say, and Donald Trump said last night, Obama won't say ISIL either. Uh, ISIS, rather, he says ISIL. But, you know, what's happening is that the ISIS and Muslims are saying, listen, we want control. We want control of Turkey. You're a major nation. You're right here on the coast of, of Europe. We want you under our authority and our power. Don't do it. We're going to bring horrific events uh, to your citizens here. Make them bow down. Uh, make, make France bow down. Have you seen how the done. new Muslim mayor of London is already saying we can't have any women in bathing suits on government buses? Uh, advertising, and he's now saying he's going to go after folks that criticize Muslims. They literally, he says he may try to break away from England too and take London over and make it London stand. I mean, look, I didn't use to sit here and bash the Muslims, but give me a break. Once they get to a concentrated level, the radical Muslims, the, the Orthodox Muslims, whatever you want to call it, they get they get radical and they start taking over. That is their plan to overthrow our free societies. Why is the left bringing them in? For, for that reason, they, 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 while the, why is the left bringing them in? Because the, the left, if you will, are, are being told that uh, if they don't do it, if they do do it, first of all, they will be greatly rewarded if they do do so. Uh, they'll be protected. They'll have the mega incomes and mega positions of authority. But if they don't do it, they get absolutely nothing. In fact, they get the kiss of death. So. For them, the choice is let it happen and perhaps somehow another. I was about to say, a lot of experts I've talked to say that's why the left does grovel to Islam. They're afraid of it. Whereas Christians and conservatives and libertarians, we're so nice and friendly, we let them push us around. We let the biggest wimps on earth push us around while they roll a red carpet out to people that throw homosexuals off buildings. Yeah, well, you know, I, I think that every religion has, Alex, at his, at his basic premise world domination. I mean, it doesn't always have to be an evil, malicious, violent one. 
Uh, but everywhere, every religion wants to be the number one religion. It wants to dominate the world, and it wants all people on planet Earth to be adherent. And that's to it. it. The left are collaborators by instinct. They used to collaborate with the communists. Now they collaborate with the Muslims, and that's just they're they're horrible people. Yeah. So I, I, you know, we have to realize that this is what's happening right now. Christians are wimpy as they come. I mean, I don't know if I want to call them Christians. So we've invited anymore. this Christian persecution. The UN admits doubled the last eight years. Uh, Christians are the most persecuted group on earth times everybody else, and we won't stand up for ourselves. So we've asked for it. You know, I, I, I think there's been a dumbing down, and the media has played a major role in the dumbing down of the Christian faith. And uh, and as a result of that, America has lost, is, is fighting forces. I mean, last time we were on, I think you asked a question about how you're gonna wake up these people. The, the people that need to be awakened, the Christians, the people that are, uh, that are looking at what Donald Trump is doing, is we need men all over America to speak as Donald Trump has spoken, to confront the powers that be, to confront the globalist ideologies. We've got to realize Trump. how much, I mean, imagine the threats you and I have gone through. Can you imagine for Trump? It must be a hundred times. Yeah, I, it, to, to be sure. But when we get men, you, you get, if we could get a hundred thousand men to stand up in, in various states across America with the same kind of cojones, that Trump is demonstrating, we could take this nation back. But we're not doing that. They're being dumbed down. They're being told by their families. They're being told by the media uh, that we need to be more tolerant. We need to accept other religions. I, I don't know if you're aware of what's happening in, in, in a real sense, what's happening religiously in, in the UK. Forget about the European Union. I mean, Muslims, Islam is, is taking over. Everywhere you go there, there are signs, there's the smell of Islamic food, there's a Islamic dress, and pretty soon in, in London, you will not be able to wear a swimsuit or demonstrate or say anything negative against a, London, uh, against a Muslim in London. Well, let me I mean, tell you, I've been to London quite a bit over the years, and man, it's changed since the last 10, they, and the Muslims are aggressive, and they are in your face. Now, the minute I start yelling back at them, they back off, they think I'm some European uh, you know, they tell me not to film, and I'm filming not even them. They run over at my face. I go, look, let's go. Uh, but, you know, at a certain point, I'm, I'm getting sick of it. Let's take a couple calls for Pastor Manning. He's absolutely on target. Maurice in Virginia, you're on the air. Go ahead. Yes, um, how you doing? I'm Pastor Manning, and uh, Alex, first-time caller. I listen all the time, and I follow both of you on uh, YouTube. Thank you. So, um, I think Pastor Manning hit on um, this distinction between um, uh, Obama and uh, Hillary. First, I want to go to my first point is um, Comey and Lynch. Lynch came out and said um, that she was going to review the statement before it was uh, said and before it was released. But then Comey comes out yesterday and said, nobody's reviewed my statement. That's a complete contradiction. Did you both catch that? I'm I did. Sure. In fact, he said nobody knew I was going to do this. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, we heard that. How do you review something that you don't know? You know and then that's the first question. The second question is we have to be careful. Um, not zero on um, being uh, tunnel vision with uh, by, I mean, with uh, with Obama and uh, Hillary, because I think Hillary doesn't trust. Um, Hillary, I don't think Obama trusts Hillary to further his legacy. I really don't. I think they're going to after the convention, they're going to swap Hillary out for Obama. She's going to be the sacrificial lamb. I honestly believe that because he doesn't trust Sanders because he's anti-trade. And um, he doesn't trust Hillary, as Pastor Manning brought up, because there's... there's well, that's a good thing we got going for us, is these people all hate each other. That, those are great points, Maurice. Uh, Pastor Manning? Well, yeah, you know, I, 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 the way Obama was praising Hillary in Charlotte on yesterday... She, he said she's the best person ever for president. I've never heard any, any president praise a candidate the way... Obama was praising Hillary. So there are a couple of things. One is that you might be right that she could become a sacrificial lamb. She didn't look much like a lamb on yesterday. She looked more like a rhinoceros, and Obama looked like a lamb. Now, that could be a matter of deception, because you, you never know what the hell these people are thinking about, because they're so dece de de deceitful. But on the other hand, uh, the uh, Hillary has the potential of having information about Obama that was given to her from a number of patriotic sources around America, and she's got them on the email server, or she's got them there. And I saw a very weak person. I saw a very weak Obama on yesterday. It could have been deception, but who knows? Well, the Clintons know where all the bodies are buried, and they've got the real power structure behind them. Uh, so we're all got front row seats. This is a very exciting, to be, a very exciting time to be alive, Maurice. 
Thanks for the great points. I'm going to go to Mel and Daniel and Greg and Margaret and everybody, but I want to play this clip of Larry Nichols last Friday live with us on air. And we're going to briefly have him respond to it. Uh, when well, he's been saying this for over a year, that they will not indict Hillary. The fix is in. And he's got the contacts. I know some of the similar contacts. Uh, doesn't mean his contacts are always 100% right or the Clintons may not change course, but uh, this is what Larry Nichols had to say last Friday. Well, there's, there's what they're doing. She's not going to be indicted. It's over. It's over. She's not going to be indicted. So that's she the decision. They're, so they're rubbing our noses in it, squatting in our face, letting us know. And if anyone, what that meeting was about for those career prosecutors, she's not going to be indicted. But there's going to be all kind of searching and talking to these prosecutors that have worked on the case. And if any one of them dare to open their mouth and to say that they were coerced into backing off an indictment, she now has something to hand them. Two of, I'm just giving two, just two. Two of the federal prosecutors working on this case. One of them is a pedophile. One of them has a male lover, and he's a male. All right, let's stop now, right there. Yeah, queer don't mean much anymore. But and of course, and of course. Okay, so that full clip's about five minutes long. It's up on Infowars.com. Let's bring him in to co-host with myself and Pastor Manning. Continue on with your phone calls after the break. Uh, Larry, you called it. Give us the aftermath. What you're seeing today is, well, actually what you saw in his press conference, Comey's, you saw the result. Comey was mad. I think you could tell it, Alex. He, look at his entire He looked freaked state. out. I mean, he looked freaked. He, yeah. he didn't look like he normally does. No. And so what happened, if you look at it, the text of his statement, all the way through, all the way through, all the way through, Alex, it's saying we're going to recommend her to be prosecuted. But then at the very end, at the last minute, boom, here it is. He says we can't get prosecutors to do it, kind of telling us they've been blackmailed. Exactly. So what happened to Mr. Comey is he gets out there and that Friday meeting worked. You know, they went in, explained to Lynch, and then Lynch took it and explained it to Comey and the prosecutors. And at the last minute, he had to take out the recommendation to prosecute. That's why he was mad. That's why he looked so weird. <clears throat> and that's why his text of his statement was so, so odd. You know, even everybody, even liberal media people are saying it was weird that he talked all the way through and everybody thought he was going to indict or recommend, recommend an indict. But he didn't. At the so end he wanted to have his cake and eat it, too. Go ahead and say she yeah. is horrible. She should be indicted. But we can't find prosecutors that will do it, which is pretty <clears throat> Wow, I tell you, that is dead on. That makes a lot of sense. Now, do you have that from your sources or from working with the Clintons? Well, both, actually. Both. Now, I'm going to skip this network it, break. I'm going to skip this break. This is too important. Our, our, our whole country's in jeopardy, folks, but just support the broadcast. Uh, Pastor Manning's here. He can pop in any time he likes. Manning's been, of course, on the front lines of, of taking on the Clintons and Obama. Uh, but uh, Larry Nichols continuing on here, consummate Clinton insider, uh, other points. Well, you know, well, Alex, if I can just, I, I, Larry, I don't want to interrupt no, you. No, no, please jump no. in. No, no. The, the, you know, Donald Trump has said Hillary is the most crooked, most corrupt politician to ever run for office. He's absolutely right. Nobody has a history as corruption of corruption as as long standing and replete as Hillary. <laughs> Going all the way back to Whitewater in Arkansas and the Rose Law Firm to Vince Foster to presently where she is. I mean, there's just nobody with that kind of a pedigree. You're absolutely, absolutely right. Absolutely. Nobody of that corrupt. And I, I think that, that that statement that Donald is making needs to be looked at a, a lot deeper than most people are taking it as a as a verse of comedy, a statement of comedy. We're looking at a person, and if she is the mo mo most corrupt, then my question would be, um, if she's more corrupt than any other person that's ever sought this office, is she more skilled uh, at handling corruption than anybody else? And I stated earlier today that Bill Clinton perhaps would not be as corrupt as he is if he had not been inspired. Well, I was about to say, more and more experts that were there said that Hillary was really the president and that she ran the show, and that she would actually, this is confirmed, right. come in and beat the hell out of him, and he was scared of her. Yeah, 
I mean, and, and so is she has she been running the show for quite some time? Uh, th th we're looking at a very serious issue with within our nation. Well, let me ask let me ask Larry Nichols this because he's on record helping put him in power and the whole nine yards until they started murdering kids and he had to stand up and say no to it. If you're a new listener, he's behind the Clinton Chronicles. Everything that we know originally about the Clintons. Uh, who is wearing the pants in this relationship? I mean, Bill looks like he's a corpse now. <coughs> oh, Alex, That's yeah, Alex Pastor, listen, don't even think any other way. Hillary is the pants in that family. Hillary is the power. Look, <coughs> all Bill Clinton wanted for being president, for being governor, he just wanted the perks. He never wanted to run he, he didn't want to do the job. He just wanted the perks, chasing women, being a rock star, the whole nine yards. Hillary pulls all of the strings. Anybody around her today knows that she pulls the strings. Bill's nothing. Bill Clinton is absolutely nothing. Hillary is the power. And Pastor, you were talking about going back to the Rose Law Firm. I don't think people remember. Hillary was actually fired from working on the staff that was doing the impeachment work on Nixon. Richard Nixon. She yeah, she dummied fired. up evidence. She dummied evidence. Yeah, because she was so deceitful, and the you know, and the guy that was doing it had literally fired her. So she's got a real good pedigree. She's a true demon. So, 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 so is yeah. she a sociopath, a psychopath? What would you say she is, Larry? God. Now, Alex, that's the damnedest question I've ever, excuse me, Pastor, didn't mean to say damnedest, but that's the damnedest question I've heard, because I don't know how you answer that. She is, <laughs> she, she is a sociopath. She is. Now, let me expand yeah. on this, because this is a question for Pastor Manning and you. First Manning, where do you think they go next? Is she emboldened by the arrogance? It really seems to even wake up the leftist media so what does this signify? I mean, how does this calculus come together, Manning? And then I want to go to Nichols. She, 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 she has to take the presidency at all calls. Um, and she has to fail forward then. Yeah, she's, she's got she's to take the presidency. She's, she's <laughs> absolutely positively got to do that. Uh, and then from there, she will begin to get revenge. I mean, there, oh, yeah. she, and, 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 and if what, she's a psychopath, a sociopath, she certainly is demon possessed. And, and this is certainly not a, a, a swipe at women, certainly not. But she principally, like most women, will seek revenge once the power has been stored to her. Now, I'm not against women. All the women, don't start hating me. But it's and, well known uh, that that's a stereotype of women is the vengefulness and, the, and men right. do it too, but, you know. And 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 and, and, it, and so as a as a woman woman president, she's going to get she's going to seek vengeance. She she can't resist it. She will not be able to resist it. So All I, I know I, is I was nothing when they were in, and the Clintons really gave me some problems. They got me fired. They had me attacked, physically attacked. So yeah, I'm, I'm, Manning, what do you expect to happen if she gets into me? <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, we know they bombed Oklahoma City to blame Limbaugh. So maybe they'll just do a false this flag and blame it on me. This is very serious advice. Do not have what any tax liabilities have nothing where they can approach you from a taxable point of view Absolutely. and prosecute you. Uh, make sure your properties are not In having any tax liabilities. Yep. Uh, that's going to be the first line of defense for every patriot once Hillary well, gets Well, Mike, look what they did to the Christians and with Obama. And they say, absolutely. Let me ask Nichols that question. What do you expect to happen, my friend, to yourself? You're one of their, I mean, Drudge. They're foaming at the mouth to go after Drudge. They're admitting they want to go out. The, the Democratic platform says arrest climate change deniers. I mean, this is like malice or something. <laughs> yeah. You know, Alex, let me tell you, yesterday, yesterday, when I saw it go down, where she's not getting a recommendation to prosecute. <coughs> and then Obama started kissing her butt when he doesn't like her. That shows yeah, he's scared of her now. He knows which way the cabbage. I'm sorry, go yeah, ahead. Now, let me tell you now, I'm, I'm scared to say this for because it was something Vince Foster said. But I'm going to tell you, when she got off from the email thing. Now, remember, she had just gotten off from the Republicans on the Benghazi. They rolled over. So now, Alex, think about it. This is what I thought about the minute that happened yesterday. Do you realize I'm the only thing between her and the presidency? Me. 
I mean, yeah, you got Trump. No, but I know uh, you were there. You know where the bodies are buried. Clinton said yeah. in the New York Times he fears you. So you see, that was a pretty awesome feeling I had, thinking, oh, my God, I'm there. I'm the one in between them. And I'm going to tell you, revenge, Hillary Clinton has all of Washington, D.C. shaking to their knees right now. Mm. She has the FBI. That's I'm sorry. Powerful, Larry. Very powerful. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, she has the raw FBI personnel files on all of on all the congressmen, senators, their staffers, the media. She's got it all. We're going to have the Jezebel demon princess as our queen. <clears throat> That's right. Boom, and, 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 you're right. And, Pastor you Manning, can you do five more minutes with myself and Nichols? Or you got to go. Yeah, yeah, I, I can. I well, can. well, take us out to break. We're 60 seconds. Take us out to break, Manning. You're chomping at the bit. I am too. Go ahead. Uh, the Jezebel of modern of modern times is now yes. before us on television running for president and most likely is going to take it hook or crook. And so when you said Jezebel, that is the that is how she ought to be identified. And when we look at the kind of power and the corruption and the pain that Jezebel brought to the people of Samaria and the people of Israel in the northern kingdom, we need to get ready here in America. That's right. We're, this country's going kind of, under judgment. If Hillary Clinton's kind of elected, power. absolutely. The Bible says that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against it. And mathematics and quantum mechanics shows that for every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction, Newtonian physics. But I've seen that now in my 42-plus years on Earth. As I get a little bit older, a little bit wiser, I just see that things actually work in patterns. There's, there's rules in the universe, and Trump's not perfect. He's a nationalist. He wants prosperity. He's become more of a Christian. I know people that know him well. He's a listener. I'm going to just stop right there. Don't give the press weapons they want. But Trump's dialed in, folks. And so we, this great evil's rising up. God's giving us an opportunity. Do we take it or do we leave it? And I'm telling you that I know in my heart if Hillary's elected, she's going to cause a world war and destroy this country. I, I just know it. I know for the most certainty in my life that if, if, if we let her steal the election, whatever, we're done. This is it. This is the death of our country and probably other countries. I mean, I, I'm just telling you, I'm sure of it. I've never talked like this. That's why I'm just all in everything against her. Pastor Manning, a closing comments from you. Then I'm going to get closing comments here from Larry Nichols. I'm going to come back and take calls and go to our next guest. But this has been an epic last hour. People can't say the shows just get more and more powerful. That's because it's reality. This isn't a game. This isn't entertainment. You've been visited. I've been visited. I've been, I mean, this isn't, this isn't a game. But we understand that if we lose this, we lose everything. So there's nothing to lose but laying down. We fight, we win. Alex, you are both historically, scripturally, and according to physics, you're dead on for the action, the reaction, historically and scripturally. Uh, when Jezebel's take place or when the enemy comes in like a flood, God does raise up a standard. That is the opposite reaction. And Hillary is going to perhaps bring America back to its senses again and raise up the standard against her, as was in the days of Ahab and Jezebel, when all 850 prophets were eating at her table. God brought in one prophet by the name of Elijah who called for no dew nor rain for a period of three years to bring down the power of the kingdom. So you're right on three points, and all you have to do is just follow those three points. And I've always taught that if you want to know how to do something and how to succeed at it, no matter what might be your religious uh, or spiritual beliefs, if you do it the way the Bible does, the way God does, you'll always have great success. So I think for your looking back to Jezebel and Ahab and looking at what happened in physics in terms of reaction, you're dead on. And we can take comfort in that, though it might look dark and gloomy now. We can take comfort in the fact that even Hillary herself is not greater than That's the right. truth of physics. She Atla, can't defeat physics. Atla.org. Uh, the Spirit of the Lord is strong with this one. Thank you, Pastor Manning. Thank you. Uh, going back to Larry Nichols. Thank you, sir. Larry Nichols, minute and a half closing comments. Uh, you've been dead on, my friend. We're praying for you. Look forward to getting you on for a full hour to take calls sometime next week. Uh, go ahead, sir. 
Well, I mean, Alex, it's just where it is. You, you will see the most in incredible thing happening now that you've ever seen. The media and everybody, they know Hillary and they're scared to death of her. She's going to be able to snap her finger, Alex, just snap her finger. And the media is going to not cover a story that she doesn't want covered. They're going to cover a story that she wants covered. They're going to be able to lie and generate, propagate all manner of scandals and things against Trump. And the media is so afraid. Everybody in Washington. So you're saying get ready so to really see Hillary woman. become fire breathing. We're about to see the real Hillary. Oh, my God. Yes. Yes. I mean, buddy, it's over unless we win. I just can't believe that the, that, that the Washington elites who aren't perfect, but there's some different elites that aren't all bad and other groups are really going to let this crazy person get full control. I don't, they don't have a choice now, Alex. They don't. This is that day that I've been afraid of for years and years and years. This is that day. And it's going to happen as sure as you and I are sitting here. It's going to happen with the pastor being on. You know, at this, I'm just telling you, it's all. No, 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 I'm just getting myself right with God. I mean, you can look at her. Yeah. She is a freaking demon. I mean, that woman has the eyes of a serial killer. She just, oh, sends a chill up my spine. God bless you, Larry. We're praying for you, my friend. Wayne Madsen was a NSA whistleblower back when they didn't put you in a federal prison for exposing criminal activity. High level. He's a best selling author for decades, written for some of the biggest publications in the country. Been a guest of ours for more than 19 years, and he's been working with us the last year. He'll be covering the RNC and hopefully the DNC with us this year. So part of the teams we are fielding on the ground for that uh, group of events. I want to go to phone calls, been holding a while about what's happening in the world. Madsen obviously can comment on those. He's just popping in today. Then Joe Biggs is joining us at the bottom of the hour, or maybe 40 after or so. I need more time with Madsen. From the border with things that are happening there. They try to cover everything that's unfolding. Uh, briefly, we're doing the biggest sale we've ever done now because we're adding non GMO seeds, heirloom seeds, shortwave uh, solar power and crank radios. Uh, we're adding, you know, all the storable food up to 40% off, 20 to 40% off. A lot of it's 40% off. It's not some gimmick where one thing's 40% off, most of it's 40% off. Uh, and then we've also got 20% off Survival Shield Nation Iodine X2. Now, some of this stuff is going to end early. I said it's going through next week. I've extended it Independence Day, you know, beyond. 4th of July. In fact, I want to say it's now the Independence Day sale, but some things will have to go off because we're going to sell out of them. You get free shipping on orders $50 or more and 10% off additionally when you sign up for auto ship on things like Brain Force or Super Mel Vitality or Anthroplex. I mean, a lot of folks, you want to sign up for auto ship like a shortwave radio, that'll last you 10 years or longer. Or a seed vault, you know, you don't need that till next year. Uh, but you can sign up for 15 days, a month, two months, three months, six months uh, on the auto ship and get 10% off additionally as well. And we always hold stuff back. So when you sign up for something on auto ship, be it Secret 12 or Super Female Vitality or Lung Cleanse, then it's never sold out. So take advantage of that today at InfoWarsStore.com or InfoWarsLife.com for our nutraceuticals. Find the whole family of great products by Longevity at InfoWarsHealth.com. And your purchase there gets you the biggest discounts out there and also helps fund this operation for the Longevity products like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Pollen Burst, Osseo FX and so many others at InfoWarsHealth.com. Okay. I am literally overwhelmed times 10. I mean, used to. There was a lot of news 20 years ago. Now it is just insane asylum. What's going on? They're all over the news announcing they want to put chips in all the kids on mainstream. I've got like three articles a day and, and, and news clips. You know, ABC News saying everybody's going to get a chip soon. What is that? Um, uh, Euro rocked by Brexit. Now George Soros spends $100 million on German bank collapse. Deutsche Bank to sell $1 billion of shipping debt to boost capital. Saudi Arabia is having to do $10 million loans. I mean, stuff's getting weird. Uh, Deutsche Bank's going straight down right now. It'll, it'll make Lehman Brothers you know, look like a hiccup. Uh, we've got all that craziness. We've got bizarre left-wing. It's not even left-wing. It's suicidal behavior. I'm not a right winger. Wayne Madsen used to be called a liberal, but you know, I know he's been supporting Trump tacitly because Hillary's so evil. I, I mean, I'm not against Muslims. Our government goes, stirs them up, puts the radicals in charge, and now they have the the, the Swedish party you know, uh, government minister saying, you know, when the Muslims rape, it's okay because it's their culture. Now, left wing German politician who was raped by migrants lied and said it was Germans because she didn't want to say it was Muslims. I mean, 
and then she wears a hood over her head to like sympathize with them. It's Stockholm syndrome. I just, I, I as a classical liberal, I'm getting really pissed off, man. And Hillary persecuting the press for stuff they, the, the, and, and, and whistleblowers, and then she gets away with stuff ten thousand times worse. I know Wayne Manson's written articles about this. I think Hillary's mainly a Chinese government agent. I know Israel's involved, and so are the Saudis. But he's written an article, and I respect this guy at Infowars.com. It's at WayneMansonReport.com as well. Israel pressured FBI to clear Hillary. If Israel was spying via Hillary's servers, it would explain why FBI is backing off. Well, well, yeah, that's what I've said day one. She's not an idiot. She's always sold access and data. You put it on there, you have plausible deniability, boom. And so he's got an article saying Israel was using it as a clearinghouse. That makes sense because as bad as our government is, would they really let the Chinese do this? I mean, anybody does it. It's treason. So he's got the sources. Let me tell you, he's, I'm not kissing his butt, but it's true. He is the original Snowden. Snowden's a great guy, done great things. Notice he's attacking Hillary. He knows who the evil is. Notice uh, WikiLeaks is as well. They know who the evil is. I mean, these are evil people, folks. All the real liberals, by, by liberal, I mean pro-freedom, are against Hillary. I, it just, it's not that Trump's perfect, but my God, this woman's bad. I'm ranting here, Wayne, because it's just over the top. Where do you want to start first? Well, what happened yesterday? I mean, it's just... I mean, yeah. it's like I'm a tennis player and they got a ball machine shooting balls every second here. I can't hit them all. Yeah. You know, yesterday was very interesting to listen to FBI Director Comey. Uh, you know, the FBI never misses a chance to go after, quote unquote, Russian and Chinese hackers. I mean, they, they almost have a like a, a franchise on this. Um, but yesterday I was listening to Comey very closely and he did admit that Hillary Clinton's private servers. Remember, we were told it was one server in Chappaqua. That was the other uh, revelation. Comey said there were multiple servers and some had been taken offline and it was like trying to uh, get all these emails together. It was like trying to put together a giant jigsaw puzzle. Now, if that doesn't show criminal intent, I don't know what does, but uh, let's get back. To, let's get back to this uh, a foreign intelligence agents. He said, we know that foreign intelligence agencies took advantage of the lack of security on Hillary Clinton's servers to penetrate and obtain classified information, which he included as sensitive compartment in, in, in information. And that's what you that's did at the NSA. Guy. You headed up a major division program trying to stop people leaking info. Isn't this a classic deal to put it on some server and claim you don't know it's penetrated? I mean, she, she knew she's a famous spy, been CIA since college. She knew full well what she was doing. Well, if she doesn't know, all the people around her certainly knew. And Sidney Blumenthal, who was uh, working with her uh, on these private servers to help bring down Gaddafi in Libya, and what a wonderful result we've seen there from that uh, uh, very poor decision. And the Benghazi stuff was all being transmitted by these private servers. But when I heard Comey say foreign intelligence agencies, he didn't he didn't refer to uh, China and uh, or Russia. That is always code because the Israelis are involved. You cannot be an FBI director or a career prosecutor uh, in the Justice Department and even be thought that you're investigating Israel. And and if you did look at it, you're certainly not going to mention uh, you know anything about Mossad. And when, and then I heard the same guy some. Um, uh, a cybersecurity expert on both Fox News and an interview with Politico. Neither one of them are, are I mean, they're, they're, the Fox is generally pro-Israel, as is, I believe, Politico. And he, this guy said that um, the countries involved, he said China, uh, Russia, and Israel. And he said that on Fox News, and he said it in an interview with Politico. After hearing Comey and then hearing this guy who had apparently had worked uh, in security for Alcatel, Lucent, and Cisco Systems, he seemed to know what he was talking about. So clearly it's being reported Israel was in there. Obviously Israel's penetrated the U.S. more than anybody. And let's be clear, yeah. I don't hate Israel. It's different power blocks. But at the same time, Israel puts people in prison that admit they have a nuclear program that's been around 45 years. Yeah. It's not right. You're not allowed to come in here and get our secrets and, by the way, then sell them to China. Because Israel does that. They love to sell our stuff to China, but the FBI never complains about that. Look, I, you know, yeah, I've been to Israel two times, and I, every time I was over there, I had very good discussions with Israelis about, about how bad their government is. And it's worse now than 
ever has been. Netanyahu is completely off the rails. He's now um, he's now in Africa, uh, kibitzing with two of the worst dictators in African history, uh, Museveni of Uganda and Kagame of Rwanda. But you know, it works exactly. By the way, we, we put it on screen where Politico is saying Israel. So this yeah. is unprecedented for them to even mention Israel or of whatever course. factions controlling this. Let me ask you the bottom line from your sources. You're a smart guy. You don't like to speculate. What do you think Hillary was really doing? I mean, I'm not a rocket scientist, but I've got uh, a good instinct. Wasn't she really just it, selling data and putting it on the server? I, she was, I don't think she was selling it, but it was this, you know, it's this pay to play thing that, that even uh, her and her husband and Chelsea's uh, Clinton Global Initiative, Global uh, Clinton Foundation was involved with. See, there was this triangle between Hillary at state and this uh, private company that Bill was involved with and also Huma Abedin was involved with while she was a State Department employee called Tenio up in New York, and then Bill Clinton's uh, uh, Clinton Foundation. This was like a big uh, uh, menage a trois, corporate menage a trois that was selling or, or trading, let's, you know, let's use, you, you know, I don't know they were selling this stuff, but at least they were trading for services all this information. And the reason I believe she had the private servers in Chappaqua at the Clinton residence was to evade uh, not only the uh, National Archives and Records Administration Act, which would make all those part of the record, but she was also trying to um, uh, evade any leaks by people within State Department. Sure. Wasn't she making her own compartment at State Department? Yeah, it was her own. What she established was her own parallel uh, communication system within the State Department. And remember what she said when... If uh, you did that at the NSA, wouldn't it be called espionage? I'd still be in jail and I wouldn't be seeing the light of day for the rest of my life. You know, Chelsea Manning, who now is reported to have tried to commit suicide today... And let, I, I, let Chelsea Manning go. I mean, you cannot keep anybody in jail while Hillary goes free. Well, she got th he got 35 years before uh, he had the sex change. Uh, but, you know, 35 years, no wonder he tried to commit suicide. He just, he got hammered because uh, of the uh, State Department cable leaks to WikiLeaks. Uh, he got 35 years in Leavenworth, and here uh, Hillary Clinton gets a pass from uh, the FBI. So no wonder the very next day. Hey, she Tony thinks she's a man. He thinks he's a woman. Let's put him in the same jail cell. <laughs> I think it's fair. Let them be bunkmates. You know, she can be the husband. Or Rachel Maddow, put her in jail with Manning. He'd be the guy, and then you know, Manning's a girl. I believe that. I believe it. Hey, we'll be back with our guest, Wayne Madsen. I'm Alex Jones. And here's what the FBI director had to say about Hillary being hacked. She told our reporters she was never hacked. With respect to potential computer intrusion by hostile actors, we did not find direct evidence that Secretary Clinton's personal email domain in its various configurations since 2009 was hacked successfully. But given the nature of the system and of the actors potentially involved, we assess we would be unlikely to see such direct evidence. We do assess that hostile actors gained access to the private commercial email accounts of people with whom Secretary Clinton was in regular contact from her personal account. We also assess that Secretary Clinton's use of a personal email domain was both known by a large number of people and readily apparent. She also used her personal email extensively while outside the United States, including sending and receiving work-related emails in the territory of sophisticated adversaries. Given that combination of factors, we assess it is possible that hostile actors gained access to Secretary Clinton's personal It email. is possible the sun came up this morning and that water's wet Look, the important point here is that he keeps saying that it's possible because obviously when somebody gets in there, they're not going to leave a trail. Ladies and gentlemen, it's in WikiLeaks. It's in the Russian leaks. It's everywhere. Hillary's emails. So we know that went on. We're going to go to break. This is a short segment. Come back and talk to Mel, Corey, and Caesar finally, and, and Margaret with our guests, and then Joe Beggs joins us from the border. But am I wrong? I mean, you, you ran security, did a lot of security stuff at the NSA. This is what you watched for. As a real expert on this, Wayne, what are we looking at? Well, first of all, the, 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 if he's talking about sophisticated uh, act, hostile actors, um, 
and I, I would argue, I would argue with uh, Comey whether um, uh, some of these countries are, you know, hostile as they were during the Cold War. I mean, China's our largest trading partner. Russia, the reason they're doing anything uh, uh, opposed to us is because we've got them backed up against the wall with now NATO troops uh, on, the, on the Baltic borders with uh, Russia. Uh, so I don't blame them. Uh, but it, it's very clear that when you get sophisticated attacks, they're coming in and they're not leaving a trail. They're pulling, they're, they're in, they, they take what they need, and then they cover up the fact that they were there. Uh, I, I, I think maybe the NSA has the capability to detect that, but I think it would be even hard for them and the U.S. Cyber Command, because every other country now is trying to see us and raise us in the area of cybersecurity, and uh, don't count the uh, the Russians and, and, and Chinese, and certainly not the Israelis, out on their sophistication of their cyber attacks. Well, let's uh, go further. Let's go further, then. Yeah. Your gut, Hillary or Trump, who's going to win? Just, just, just first approximation. And then what happens under a Hillary administration? Uh, you know, every time uh, you, I hear about polls in, in certain states, and then uh, we have this issue with this uh, Trump sending out this tweet that he's being hammered on about the uh, Hillary photograph and the star of David, you know, you know, two steps forward and four steps back. Um, I, I think... Uh, Right now, the, the, right, it's going to be very hard for him to win the battleground states of Florida and Nevada and um, uh, Virginia and North Carolina. Uh, now, oddly enough, we're seeing a, a lot closer of a race in normal Democrat pickup states of Michigan and um, uh, uh, Ohio, which is a either or. It can go either way. It's a bellwether state. Sure. How could she win in the Rust Belt? We've got eight years of Obama screwing everybody, yeah. and, then, and, and, then, and then she's, like, running on his record? Right. And Pennsylvania is in play. Uh, that's very interesting, too, because that's always been a, uh, a sure Democratic state in most of the last few elections. What's your gut tell you, though? The establishment wants Hillary. I think there's going to be an election hey, fraud. Look at all the neocons that are bolting for uh, Hillary, the, these so-called Republicans, these chameleons. You know, they were—, they were um, LBJ Democrats, then they were Scoop Jackson Democrats, and when Jimmy Carter became president, they left the Democratic Party uh, and they became Reagan Republicans, and then they stuck, they got in with the Bush family, and now look what they're doing. They're going back to the Democrats under That's Hillary. right. Anybody that supports Hillary ought to be ashamed of themselves. You couldn't be with a more rancid establishment whore. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and, and look, the, the, the other thing, look at the series of events. We had this meeting on the on the uh, Attorney General Lynch's uh, private aircraft at Sky Harbor Air International in Phoenix on in the private area of the airport. And Clinton says, "Oh, I just wanted to go on and discuss uh, my golf game and my grandkids." And Janet Reno, uh, you know, her, but the her, FBI her, ordered the media to not film it. We'll be back with Wayne Madsen. Your phone calls in three minutes. We're going right to Mel, Corey, and Caesar. The real troopers holding in Margaret. Stay with us. I'm Alan Jones with Infowars.com. Please don't take the side for granted. It's We're on the march. America is going into a very decadent cycle right now. Global corporations are basically exempt from the law. We, we think about classical dictators and armies as enemies. But now we face global corporate rule. And Hillary Clinton is one of the most disgusting expressions of hubris and sadistic evil I've, I've ever heard of in history, not just my lifetime. I want to go to our loaded phone calls for uh, about 10 minutes to go to Joe Biggs on the border, but uh, have a few minutes left here with Wayne Madsen. Uh, very briefly, Wayne, I've got articles on the London Telegraph today with the top Silicon Valley people, all of them building armored redoubts, moving to the middle of nowhere, saying they think collapse is coming. They've set up a system where they collapse things to get control, but then it makes the money they've created worthless. It's like they can't help themselves because they have no goodwill towards people. They like screwing people over, but they screw themselves, corrupting the civilization that allowed them to even hatch. I just, I don't understand it. It's almost like the old syndico anarchist uh, uh, political philosophy, which I believe Soros, George Soros practices every day. I mean, how he's 
now shorting the uh, the euro. Uh, he did the same thing uh, after Brexit with the pound. Uh, he thrives on chaos. They bet on every number and then just create chaos. Yeah, yeah, and, and he finds profit can be made in chaos, and I, I see that all the time with the stuff that he gets his hands around. Uh, but uh, and, and I, I believe our uh, election here is uh, no different because what we're seeing, look, all over the world we have political dysfunctionality taking place right now. You know, there's probably going to be a hung parliament in Australia. No, no party there got the... Uh, uh, the majority to form the next government. Uh, Spain is in a similar situation. Uh, we have uh, uh, even the Germans now, Germany's talking about leaving the European Union. I mean, that is the engine for the EU, And but we see parties there that are opposed. What about uh, the Islamic love affair with radical Islam? Well, what's up with these German women getting raped, even, even ministers, and then covering it up? Uh, you know, I think it, it grows out of their World War II experience. They don't want to be seen as um, um, xenophobic. So they hate themselves, so they ally with who their grandfather's allied with to come rape them. Yeah, yeah, essentially. I mean, the same thing in Sweden. Uh, I mean, and, and we have... But they're uh, allying with the people that sided with the Nazis, and, and they hate America. What's their problem? Yeah, I think they're, they're confused about their own history uh, in, in some of these countries. I mean... We, we had this judge that sentenced this uh, uh, Syrian um, uh, migrant uh, to just like a few months in prison because he raped a, a, a boy in a swimming pool because he said he was, you know, he hadn't had sex for a while. I mean, like that's an excuse, but apparently the judge felt sorry for him. No wonder Austria, uh, they now know that their presidential election was fixed and the, and the Austrian court is... Uh, ruled that they have to have another uh, election in October. Sure, here's another uh, article on that. Uh, German author banned from Facebook after sharing book on migrant crime, Infowars.com. I mean, where do they, it's just, it's crazy authoritarianism. Right, and I, I think we're seeing the same thing happening in this country. I, 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 I said from the very beginning, I thought Donald Trump was absolutely on message with this uh, um, anti-political correctness nonsense. Do you know, there was there's a state representative from Philadelphia in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, who says they, she's opposed to the Confederate flag being used for Civil War reenactments. I mean, can you imagine how how foolish and moronic that is? Oh, she wants to ban symbols. She's a complete. I mean, what you want to use the Imperial Japanese War flag at Civil War reenactments? That's I mean, like France banning Nazi memorabilia from even like be, being sold. Well, who cares? It's, it, I mean, it's 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 memorabilia. It, it happened. It's history. It's like if I have a Japanese sword from 500 years ago, which I don't. I can't afford one. They're awesome. It doesn't mean I support Imperial Japan or the Shoguns. I mean, it's the most yeah. crazy crap I've ever heard. I mean, I know. Uh, if I can afford one, I have one of those SS daggers. They're awesome. Doesn't mean I like the SS. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to some callers. Uh, let's go to Costa Rica. And talk to Mel. You're on the air with Wayne Madsen. Thanks for holding so long. In fact, I'm putting Mel on hold, getting his address. He's getting a free Hillary for prison shirt. Uh, go ahead, Mel. Hey, thank you, uh, Mr. Jones. Uh, Sicilian Mel here from Costa Rica. Can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Great. Uh, while we're all distracted with Hillary Clinton and we're all distracted with Mr. Trump, there is the Antichrist of the New World Order who just got elected in the Philippines that you guys need to pay very, very close attention to. I mean, this yeah, guy... Yeah, he says he's like the right-wing messiah and he's SWAT-teaming everybody and killing hundreds of, quote, drug dealers, that guy? Yeah, he just came on TV yesterday and he said, uh, and mentioned five names of five-star generals, and he said, don't leave the country. You're going to be call called in for questioning. They already know that they're guilty of sin. This guy is going to start hanging people in public squares. One of the reporters asked him, why don't you use the electric chair? He said, I don't want to waste any money on electricity. Okay? No, no, I mean, this I've guy, seen this new kind of flamboyant type guy. What do you make of him, Wayne? Oh, well, you know, his name is Duterte, and, and they call him Duterte, Duterte Harry, <laughs> Dirty Harry. Uh, look, the, the problem is, is that Obama... Uh, has pledged U.S. military support to the Philippines uh, in uh, Obama's pivot to Asia, which is nothing more than his desire to take on China militarily. Uh, so Obama has this uh, wonderful ally in this guy, Rodrigo Duterte, who, who you know, he, he, he just said the other day he's only been president for a, 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 a week and a half or so, and he's, he, he proudly proclaimed that he's 
uh, extrajudicially killed five uh, drug dealers. I think it's like 30 now. He also said he will now kill members 30. of the press. He said, I, I don't like you, I will kill you. Oh, yeah, yeah, journalists are under the gun there, too. And uh, But look, this is Obama's new... Uh, ally in his uh, planned war. Well, it's okay because Obama's liberal. Thank you, Mel. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to Caesar in Mexico. Caesar, thanks for holding. I didn't even notice you're from Mexico. Apologize. I didn't get to you earlier. I'm going to send you a Hillary for President shirt or a Molon Lobby, whichever you choose. Yeah, give us your name and address. We'll send it to you, Caesar. Uh, make, make sure you're getting these addresses, John. I'm sorry to throw that at you. Uh, we just That guy just hung up. Call back caller, uh, the last caller from, um, from down in Costa Rica. Caesar, go ahead. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Alex. Uh, I had, a, I had a comment uh, here, how we see, I've been working in the education system here for about seven years now, eight years, and uh, one reason I think, you know, I, I strongly believe that why people don't do anything, you know, even though like what, what happened with Clinton yesterday, Hillary Clinton, where, you know, it's just crazy what's going on, and people, it seems that they're just sitting back and doing nothing, and one reason why I, I see this, we all see it, and, and one reason why is because you know, the dumbing down of, of the population, even not, even only here in Mexico, you know, it's, it's happened all over the world. And, and, and one way I see it is this, is that we have uh, professional development uh, events every year. And each year, it seems like we are getting taught, trained to uh, apply activities in, in the classroom that are like game oriented. It's called gamification. It's a cool strategy, but at the same time, it makes... It makes like, and, and, and even young adults, like at the universitarian age, they're constantly asking in the class, teach your game, let's, let's play a game. And it shows you how like their mentality is yeah, like. Yeah, this children, was admitted you know? in the 60s. They don't want you in the real world. So they want you to do simulated competition games where you're never involved in the real world. It's kind of like the, you know, the Romans with, with, with gladiator events and horse races to divert the public from what was really going on in the world. It's a distraction so that we sleep while they live. And they also uh, try to make, you know, regular learning as boring as possible and never teach people how it really works, how, how, how the world really works, because then you might actually be effective. Everything is about teaching you not to be effective. And, and, and you try to tell folks that are obsessed with gamification that, hey, this is a system to control you. They get mad with a Pavlovian response like you're trying to destroy their world because their world is a fantasy world. I'm not against games, but there's so much real stuff in the world. Games are only trying to copy the real world. But uh, here's the definition since you mentioned it. We'll put it back on screen. For TV viewers, it's the application of uh, typical elements of gameplay, point scoring, competition with others, rules to play to other areas of activity. Typically, is an online marketing technique to encourage engagement with a product or service. So yes, this is this is what gamification is, and people are mad who live in like fantasy land. They're obsessed with their fantasy shows or their video games. And I'm like, hey, I get it. I like some fantasy shows, I like some video games, but it can't be your world. And you can tell they get a glaze in their eyes. They're now intellectually in that fantasy world and see you as someone almost trying to wake them up on Saturday morning at 6 a.m. They want to go back to Wonderland, back to the Matrix. Great points. Thank you, Caesar. Or, or hold on for one more comment. Uh, Wayne, imagine your comment on that. Well, you know, I, I, I think the I talk to people who are educators and it's it's awful now. in, in some of these school systems, they, they don't even teach in, in some of these school systems cursive handwriting, you know, because everybody's getting so used to the, you know, texting and the, the keyboards and all the digital stuff, uh, you know. It's the same complaint I have about Kindle. Um, look, you know, I, I've, I've got a lot of real books, and I'm going to keep my real books. I'm not going to put any of my books if I can help it. On and it's Kindle. not that you're afraid of something new. They admit the screens hurt your eyes. It can digitally be changed. Right. The book is physical. It's very important to have physical copies. Right, and and, and, and Kindle, any book that's electronic can be altered. They've already uh, been doing it. Just like I believe the 28 missing pages are the still classified pages. When John Brennan, the CIA director, said, oh, there's nothing in there that implicates Saudi Arabia and 9-11. The only reason he would say that after others have come out and said, of course, it implicates Saudi Arabia is that he's gone in and altered. Well, he said, he pages. said a week after he said he, was, he might release it. He said an altered, he said a redacted version. Yeah, it really, it, it, he's altered it. If he says there's nothing in there that implicates Saudi Arabia. We have all these senators, all these House members have seen it. It's in there. He says it's not there. You're right. Right. And and that can be done with Charles Dickens novels, 
Herman Melville's novels, uh, the Bible, you name it, whatever oh, it is. Are, you haven't heard? They're already re-releasing classics now, politically correct style. Oh, absolutely, of course. Well, we already had the... They don't want Tom Sawyer saying it's racist. Right. The state representative from... I mean, Mark Twain was anti-racist, but he put the stuff that was going on in the book. It's right. not racist to historically show something in a novel. Well, I guess a state representative from Philadelphia, she, she wants to remove all references to the Confederacy if she wants to remove the, the Confederate flag from re reenactments. Uh, uh, of course, she represents... i got to point out that she represents an area, uh, West, uh, West Philadelphia, where kids graduating from high school there excel in only carjackings and uh, shoplifting. That's incredible. So, well, those that control history control the past and the present and the future. Wayne Madsen, WayneMadsenReport.com. Look forward to seeing you about a week and a half up there to cover the RNC and the DNC, my friend. Thank you so much. You bet. Thanks, Alex. Thank you. We're going to go to more calls. Caesar, uh, closing comments. Sorry, go ahead. Another another quick comment question more like okay I've been recently investigating about MK Ultra mind control and I've been saying that uh, back in the 60s you mentioned actually that where they have been you know the, the government officials have been putting you know testing people with LSD uh, in secret but it, do you see that happening now but like absolutely they're testing all sorts of weird designer drugs at UT that. I always hear from people, and I'm not even into the drug culture, but I know people that, you know, uh, talk about and tell me about, oh, there's this really incredible drug they're handing out downtown. It comes from somewhere at UT, and then and, and you, you, you investigate it, and it's connected to some government program, you know, just testing stuff on people. Absolutely. The government put LSD out on the streets in America, and again, when you say government, criminal elements, not the cops down the street, and there's just all sorts of weird black budget social engineering crap going on. Exactly. Well, thanks a lot, Alex. Uh, really Thank you terrible. so much, my friend. Yeah, I mean, look, look. I don't like the drug culture. And I don't like drugs and all other stuff. Uh, I mean, that is illegal drugs. I drink coffee. That's a drug, for heaven's sakes. You know, I took a nasal spray this morning that was a prescription steroid. So when you say, I don't do drugs, that's not an accurate co comment. I, I take some drugs. You know, I'm, I'm not as you know perfect as Trump, who doesn't even take aspirin. I take Advil sometimes. I take, you know, whatever. But the drug culture, I can't stand it. But they made the culture dirty and weird and sick because you make it illegal, then criminal elements come in. And then it puts all the money into it. That's why I'm for decriminalization of drugs. All right, now let's shift gears down to the Texas border. Not sure where he is right now. He's been a lot of different places. We may not even say for security issues. Uh, but uh, Joe Biggs with our crew, uh, and including Allie and, of course, Zimmerman, are down there right now uh, covering a lot of stuff. Some of the reports are already on Infowars.com. We've got some hidden cameras down there to get some of the border crossings. Biggs, of course, got the footage with others of the drug dealers coming across famously with the big pounds of drugs that, that, that Trump covered. So what have you learned in the last 24 hours and what's coming up, Joe Biggs? Well, last night we got into McAllen, Texas, and we were able to make our way down to the Rio Grande River at the U.S.-Mexico border. And what we saw within a matter of minutes was a group of, I believe, seven individuals from Honduras. And then we ran into another group of about five or six people. You know, that happened in seconds. You know, I've been covering the border in, in this area for quite some time, for about two years now since I've been at InfoWars. And it used to be, you know, maybe once out of a week you might see something like this. But it's now at a point where our reporters last week, within a matter of minutes of getting there in the evening time, were able to catch. And the Border Patrol says that major uptick. And when Obama invites these people up, who are mainly teenagers, a lot of them are getting raped and killed by the coyotes. And we're not talking about dogs, so we're talking about the, the smugglers. Well, last, uh, the last group we encountered last night, was the women were in tears. They were crying. So I don't know what they encountered before they made it across the river, but they seemed kind of traumatized a bit. So there's no telling what could have happened, like you said, as far as rape or something like that. you know. But they did say they had just come over the, the river. They were in dry clothes, so I'm assuming they had a boat. It was kind of hard to make out, but... When you get out there in that area, you can hear engines and you can see smoke plumes coming up from behind the trees in that river area. So there's definitely boats out there. We were just down there earlier ago, about an hour, hour and a half ago. And we're able to go back, take some of the chips out of the cameras that we set up last night. We didn't see a whole lot after sundown, you know, because we got there and got those cameras set up right before it got super dark. So it looks like most of the activity is the, you know, three hours. Sure, you said they came start. in at night. Now they can just come in during the day because nobody's stopping them. And again, these yeah. are human beings. We don't hate them. The issue is the third world's collapsing. They're being brought in to be used as a political weapon. And I'll say this. The last few years you went down, they claimed it was mainly kids and teenagers. It wasn't. Now, because of advertising, and it seems like with the last two crews we've sent down, it is mainly teenagers and children. So it looks like they've made that a real prophecy 
by advertising it. Well, the interesting thing about it, Alex, is we were down there trading out the uh, SD cards and the cameras, relocating cameras in other strategic locations where we thought we might be able to pick up more, uh, you know, pictures and video of people coming up from the river. And as we were doing that, we decided to leave and go to another area. Now, we encountered a Border Patrol agent, a female. She had no issue with us being there, Alex. But as we were driving to go out to head uh, to head to a park to go film to actually do the show, we were chased out by Texas State Police. We were told we could not be there by them, but the federal agents, the Border Patrol, had no issue with us being there. And now we the have state camera police. Of, oh, wait, wait, wait. I wish we'd have got video. I mean, did you get video of that? Oh, I have. I have video. Well, let's it's put it up. The state on, police. It's, here's it's, the headline. It's, it's, state police don't want, don't, don't want reporters on the border. What did they say to you? Uh, they said we couldn't be there. We were trespassing if we were there, but there were no signs where we came in at. And no, that the we Rio Grande? You're the saying area. the Rio Grande on the U.S. side? You're not, a citizen can't be there? Yep. But so now we're in Hidalgo, Texas. We're down from here where there's actually somewhat of a wall. But when you go back into McAllen, there's no wall. Well, I mean, I want to see this. Open. I mean, I can't wait this video is up, Joe. But just no, it's on Twitter right now. I already retweeted it on your account. It's already got about 75 retweets and likes so oh, far. Oh, well, so we'll get it posted at infowars.com. We've got another. We've got another video. We're going to have to put up. No, no, I mean, great. Right no, I mean, I know you're shooting. I'm not complaining. I'm saying, wow, I want to see that because you're telling me the state police don't want. Did you tell them we're reporters? Yes, we told them we're hear reporters. About this. I'm so sick of this. I'm going to do a little bit of overdrive, going to the next hour with David Knight to take your calls. Uh, Corey and uh, Margaret and um, everybody else is patiently holding like Bob. Joe Biggs is down on the border with uh, Allie and, of course, uh, Zimmerman. And Allie speaks really good Spanish. She's able to talk to all these folks down there. And I'm just upset with the state police. I don't have some bone to pick with the state police. But, man, but some of the Texas state police just, as I've been down there myself, or even at the Capitol, outside, but just doing an interview, and the runovers are screaming at you. They used to be like that. Uh, they have a real First Amendment issue. We have the footage. He's going to upload the rest of it where they actually confront him when they pull him over. But if you're a TV viewer, you can see it. We're going to roll it behind Biggs talking. That's amazing. Your reporters down there covering in McCallum on the border. The illegals are just walking across everywhere. And they told you you're trespassing when, when, when you're not trespassing. I mean, what did they say when you said we're members of the press? Uh, they, they really didn't seem to care whatsoever. I mean, but who's trespassing? Let's look at that. The illegals who came across the border illegally not coming in and doing immigration the proper way, which is what we have an issue. Those people are left alone. Meanwhile, the people we encountered last night, since they're from Honduras, what's going to happen? They'll go into a detention center for maybe a few hours, be processed, uh, be given sure, a Sure, but I'm date, asking the state police a question. They, they know whose car it is. They know it's. They know who we are. They pull you over. I know that footage is going to be coming out soon. And, I mean, what did they say to you? I mean, what's the deal here? We're Americans. Leave us alone. The, the guy stopped us and basically said, hey, you can't be here. You're trespassing. You know, and if we come back, we'd probably be arrested, you know, somewhere along the lines of that. So that's the, the ridiculous thing is my point is, is we have what did you say to him? Illegally. What did you say to him? We just said, OK, you know, whatever thinks. And we started driving off. And as we started driving off, that's when I started filming from back in the in the backseat because Ali had the camera filming Zimmerman talking to the police from the driver's side window. The the guy, as soon as we passed, he sped around, made a, a little U-turn, and then just sped up behind us completely, like at a high rate of speed, got right up on our tail end, I'm assuming to get our license plate number. And then as we went off down, left down the road away from them to go back onto the main road, he reached out of the window, looked like he was filming us or something like that, maybe to get more license plate information to try to run our place and find out who we are. Well, let me just, give the feds, uh, let me just tell the state police, uh, since they can't figure this out, the globalists are dissolving the border, and the Border Patrol's working with us trying to get the information out to save the country, and then we're down there covering the border wide open. So uh, we need to explain. The bad guy you're looking for is named Barack Obama and the globalists and Hillary Clinton, not us, okay? So that's, that's who opened the border up, not us. Go ahead, Joe. Well, they, they sought us out. We didn't bother them. Oh, we were in our own area last night when the uh, Border Patrol finally showed up and we were talking to the uh, illegal immigrants. They they rolled up. They started doing their thing, uh, processing the individuals, taking their belongings. And the Border Patrol had no problem. They said, just don't stand behind us. Stand off to the side. Now, sure, of so course. they had zero not... issue. The state police are the ones that want to hinder us. Well, the reason I brought this up, this happens like every time we go down there, the state police do this. I, mean, it's ridiculous. I, I just don't understand it. Is, it. is it the problem that we're Americans? I don't understand. Yeah, I mean, Americans do not have the right to move freely in America. 
Meanwhile, if you're illegal, you have the right to do whatever you want. Well, I'm you glad the, the right governor put more people down there. I just want to know, well, this is like the fifth time the state police have done this to us when we're like in major cities on the border filming stuff. It's like, uh, I, I, I guess they don't want citizens down there because it's, quote, dangerous. Well, the point is, we're doing our job exposing the open border. We're going to keep doing it, period. So leave our reporters alone. I'm not looking for trouble, but I'm just not going to have people harassed because that's what I heard from you earlier. They're like, almost ran into you, basically. Yeah, the guy just sped up right behind us and was chasing us. It was ridiculous. If we would have hit a bump and had to slow down, that guy would have rear-ended us. And then I'm sure we would have been blamed for it somehow. All right, well, you're doing a great job. You guys be safe. A lot of reports getting followed at InfoWars.com. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Keep it up. I can talk to some Border Patrol folks as well. See if we can talk to state police, too. We're just trying to get the word out. We're all on the same side here, I thought. All right, we'll be back with the fourth hour. Thank you, Joe Biggs. Folks, can follow all of it at InfoWars.com. We're going to come back, take a few calls. And the baton to David Knight. Look, I know why the state police are doing that down there. It's more of this nanny state stuff. Keep the dumb Texans away from the lawless open border. We're the ones that exposed it's open. We're the ones that exposed it and put so much pressure on it. The governor sent thousands of state police down there. So you let the men do their jobs, okay, while you run around with your cowboy hats on and tell us we're, we're, we're not men. We let you do your supposed job. Let us do our job as the real press, as the Paul Revere's to raise the alarm here. I'm not going off on some jag about the Texas State Police. They're pretty good overall in a lot of respects. But, man, they have – I just started clicking when he was talking. Every time our reporters are down there, it's the state police, man, pulling them over in their face, bugging their eyes out. It's like uh, – Border Patrol is usually p pretty good of any agency I've been around. I'll tell you who's not good is the Federal Armed Park Rangers. I don't care if it's on the border or somewhere else. They treat citizens like crap. People that are nice to them, they treat them like crap. I'm done. I am done with arrogant, out-of-control government. I don't care what level it is, and especially when people get in the way of us trying to expose what's happening. But I'm digressing, and I apologize. David Knight's coming up, and I'm going to stay until we get these calls out of the way. There's a lot of news I haven't got to yet. I know David's got about to cover it. Corey in Ohio, you're on the air. Go ahead. Yeah, as it pertains to uh, James Comey, I want to know if you thought maybe he was coerced by payment or maybe he was shown video of what might have happened to Vince Foster to change his decision? Uh, I, I think uh, the guy that predicted all this accurately is right. I think that it came out that it was uh, Israel was involved in the, and it's been in the news that Israel was involved, even mainstream news, in the servers, so they didn't want to start a whole investigation of Israel. And this is an espionage investigation, and it's so embarrassing uh, and got so much bigger uh, that uh, he basically admitted she was a horrible person. He, he, I was kind of mad at him yesterday. I was really mad, but now I kind of see what happened. Something big went on behind the scenes. So he came out and said, she's horrible, she's guilty, but no prosecutor will go after her, telling everybody that basically threats were issued to prosecutors. I mean, I think he pretty much spelled it out, and I think Wayne, and I think, uh, Wayne Madsen, but especially uh, our earlier guest, uh, broke it down. Um, and that was Larry Nichols. Yeah, I just I couldn't tell the difference on his face between guilt or maybe it was fear. I didn't know. I couldn't tell. Um, Nichols said he was angry, and, and all I know is that is what Comey usually looks like. Uh, so he did look freaked out. I'll just say this. He was animated. He was, uh, his heart was racing. And uh, it was all supposedly un, pretty much unscripted and, and wasn't going to be announced. And it was just sudden. So a lot of weird stuff going on, and I think we're going to find out exactly what's going on. But I think the best source on that probably is uh, the guest we had on earlier. I mean, did you hear him? Did you hear what he had to say? Oh, yeah. What do you yeah, think? Nichols is great. Yeah, I mean... I honestly, I think it's, I think it's just coercion. I think he was, I think he was told if he didn't step down, change his decision, then he was going to face the fate of many others. Of face. Yeah, I got from that that he was going to indict her. It's like it was like a speech he had ready for an indictment or a call for indictment, and then just they had at the end. But now we can't do that. And now that makes sense that Nichols said that. That's why it was so two sided. It's like ninety percent of it's let's indict her, and then. Oh, but we can't do that. Almost a cry for help. I tell you, I, I, all I know is Hillary Clinton is bad news. Thank you, Corey. We're going to come back and talk to Bob and a few others, and then we're going to Margaret, who's been holding. I guess they went to her and went back. Margaret's been holding the longest. I'm going to Margaret when we come back, then I'm going to go to Bob, Mike, and Joe, and then we're going to uh, hand the uh, mic over to David Knight. But it is mind-boggling, mind-boggling that they can persecute all these members of the press and whistleblowers that exposed corruption and bad stuff and were sent to jail or lost their jobs or both or got prosecuted, in some cases found not guilty, for exposing corruption. 
And then now Hillary has a server that she knew foreign governments were on. And she gets away with it. It really makes me wonder, what are they going to get away with in the future? Because this is the situation where they get away with more and more over the years. It just gets worse and worse and worse. And I ask, where are we going next? They're already starting war with Russia. They're already funding Al-Qaeda and ISIS. They're already giving weapons to our enemies. Our borders are wide open. They're bankrupting the nation. They're, they're raping the American people with Obamacare. They're just out to get us. That's not rhetoric. I mean, they are out to get us. Coming up, David Knight's about to take over in about five minutes. Self-crashing cars strike again. The perfect assassination tool. With all the nice little automated robots going into effect everywhere that are going to run our lives. California's new vaccine mandate goes into effect. Force inoculations are here. Hope you enjoy it. Autonomous killer robots. A quick look at Trump's Veep prospect. And they're going to look at a lot more. David Knight coming up. I want to go through some more of the calls that have been patiently holding. But first off, an article out of the London Telegraph. We break it down at Infowars.com. The wolves of Silicon Valley, how the megalomaniacs and hoodies became tech's answer to Wall Street. And then it just gets in to how they're building armored redoubts. Silicon Valley elites buying up huge amounts of land for secret compounds. Nouveau Riche preparing to seclude themselves from the general public. And it just ties into all the different preparations for collapse that are taking place as they prepare to create a breakaway civilization from we the people. I just want to add that uh, global financial meltdown, I have articles right here on it, have, has gone from a possibility to a probability to a virtual or near certainty. But I've explained this many times. If you're a TV viewer, I'm going to draw this out again. I'll describe it from radio listeners. Let's say here is sea level, okay? Let's say sea level is at whatever hypothetical point, okay? This is the level of tyranny. And you've got islands that are not floating, uh, as a member of Congress from Georgia says, that capsize. Uh, no, no, they're, I know I'm a conspiracy theorist, but they're really just mountains, okay? They're really just mountains. And so what happens is as the water rises, most of the third world is already under collapse. They're already in food riots. They're already in cannibalism, just insane stuff going on. The globalists admit they're orchestrating a lot of this to bring in total control and consolidation. They call it the IMF riot in 2002 documents that got leaked. And so we don't think we're really aware of this. But if you're you know, really poor, you start to feel it more if you're here in the West. Or as things get worse, you know, you're blue collar, but things aren't as good as they used to be. Things are rough and tough. Middle class, things start getting a little bit worse. Upper middle class, oh my gosh, you're underwater. And as it goes up, you know, if you're up here on the top of the mountain, say like George Soros and the globalists and Hillary and people in, in, in your own segregated bubbles, you, you don't think you're in a depression because you're up here on top of the mountain, but depending on how high the political waters rise, you're in a depression. So... We're in a depression worldwide. It's just not equally distributed, as I've always said. Just like certain cities are doing better than other cities. Most cities in the U.S. are in trouble. Many areas of Mexico have collapsed, but there's some areas that are controlled that are doing great. There's some areas of Mexico have lower crime rate than Austin, Texas. But on average, they got the highest crime rate in the world. For a country, not as a city, Chicago has that. So that's what's happening. But there are events taking place where the water is only going up and where the establishment doesn't understand is historically they can always think they can, you know, can go to higher ground politically a lot of times actually on type physical hills like in brazil but at a certain point the water will go over you that's why peter thiel and others are looking at floating cities to get away from the population so this is where the metaphor becomes reality floating cities as the as the actual landmass goes under the zombie apocalypse of collapsing, you know, a, a society run by trendies and almost no one self-sufficient, a bunch of spoiled rat, brats. It's almost like a collapse needs to happen to, you know, get order brought back into perspective the, of being self-sufficient. The problem is the globalists are doing everything they can to make things self-sufficient here on their little ship. So they're the ones helping push this to a great extent. Because I guess it's easy just to make things worse. You consolidate control instead of trying to, like, fix things.
But the truth is you're never going to get away on a ship or anything else. The water is going up. And so I'm spending 70% of my time trying to politically change this and turn this around and 30% now getting ready. Now, just a few years ago, it was I spent 90% of my time fighting to stop it and 10% getting ready. And there's kind of a doomsday clock in my own brain. I'm going to be quite honest. I'm, I'm, I'm pushing as hard as I can politically right now. I'm all in money-wise. But more and more, I'm starting to shift to where I might go 40 preparation, 60 fight back. Then I might go 50. And at a certain point, there's no point anymore. You just go 100%, get ready. It's called a lost cause. And the establishment's already thrown the towel in that, you know, the, the, they've done most of this, but they understand how dangerous it is and now kind of figure out, oh, we're not going to ride this tiger to greater power. We better just take all our stolen loot. You rationalize yourselves. You're going to have a global collapse that you control to get power. The truth is you now know it's going to be a hellhole. You're, by the way, you're not going to get out of it. If any of you want to come out and the establishment start fighting this and trying to fix things, then you might get a reprieve. But don't think you're going to get out of starting all these wars and have global collapses and all the rest of this stuff. You, you need to stop it now. Instead of all running to your escape pods, you should be trying to fix things now like we're doing instead of just trying to have a getaway plan. Because the getaway plans I've got are out of total desperation. They're not because I think those are a good move. Those are, those are emergency backup plans. But I talked to establishment people off record. I talked to billionaires on record years ago, off record too. And they just don't think it's fixable because the public is so servile, so dumb, so evil, so lazy, on average. There's a lot of hardworking people who hold the system up. But man, when things go belly up with the general public, with 100 million people on some form of EBT card, good God, it is going to be zombie apocalypse. And now we've gone from this being a possibility in many countries to it being a current reality. So we are running 20 to 40% off, and it's, it's, it's a win-win. Yeah, absolutely, I'm trying to scare people to sell products, to fund our operation, try to stop this. See how that works? I think this is a real probability. We're trying to stop it, and we're saying, get ready, 30%. 70% fight back. That's my view. Maybe you disagree. A lot of you got ready before we did. People can see this coming afar off. I've been an optimist thinking we could turn this around. But InfoWarsLife.com, you get the nutraceuticals, 20% off X2. It's getting ready to sell out. Non-GMO heirloom seeds, 20% off are the lowest prices, widest selection. 20 to 40% off the storable food that's the highest quality, best deal out there. It really is the best deal out there. It's my Patriot. They're already the best group out there. It's why I'm as a sponsor, and I can private label it and go 20 to 40% lower. We have their full spectrum of food as well. We have the exact same stuff, just different labels. And contractually can offer 24% off, but not for much longer. I'm going to run this through next week if I can. A lot of these specials are going to end in a few days because stuff's just selling out. In fact, some of these specials are starting to sell out right now. InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com, or call toll-free 888-253-3139. And the globalists want us dependent. They hate it when you know how to use a firearm, when you got a little piece of land, when you got storable food. Let's hope we never have to use any of this. But everybody instinctively, including governments and elites, are getting ready at a now breakneck speed. Is it the dollar? Is it other global currencies? Is it Deutsche Bank in trouble? That's being reported by Bloomberg and everybody else. I remember talking to Nichols last week and he goes, I was told by, and he told me the insurance company, high level Hard to believe he's got a more scratchy voice than I do, so I can do his voice good. It's going to start in the next two weeks. And he told me the name of the bank. And I, and I went and looked and didn't see anything about the bank at the time, but now it started. So heard that from old Nichols again. So I'm not saying this is coming. I hope it isn't coming. I want to push it off or stop it. But I feel real good selling non-GMO heirloom seats, the lowest price out there. I feel really good selling high-quality shortwave radios, AM, FM radios, weather radios that are crank-powered solar panel. I, sell, I feel great selling Hillary for prison shirts. I feel great uh, selling uh, Molon Lobby and Come and Take It shirts. I feel great funding ourselves with things that I personally know that I need and believe in and are the very best out there. So I want to thank you all for your supporters, uh, for your support and all the things that you've done. Because without you, we couldn't do any of it. Bob in Wisconsin, you're on the air. Go ahead. 
Yeah, uh, Alex, I just want to know if you think that uh, Hillary Clinton has been uh, vindicated after all this, and do you think the first thing she's going to do when she's elected is probably throw you and Larry Nichols in a FEMA camp? <laughs> is this a, are you trolling? I mean, vindicated? It'd be like if Hitler was his own judge at Nuremberg. No, she hasn't been vindicated. Even mainstream media says this is a travesty overall. I think it just shows outrageous collusion and corruption and blackmail and um, they, they admittedly have FEMA camps. They say they're going to re-educate patriots in them. That's in official army man manuals. I, I can't believe they put it officially and call it re-education camp, but it's just it's all over the top. Uh, but I'm not really worried about me. I'm a man. I, I don't do stuff for me personally. I do it for my children in the community because that's what men do. So I'm not worried about myself. Does this is anything else, Bob? Yeah, uh, do you think that the Patriots are going to be more demonized under Hillary? Yes, I think that bears use the bathroom in the woods. And goldfish are orange. Abs absolutely, Bob. And there goes, there goes Bob. I think that's like some fantasy. He thinks, the, oh, my gosh, you mean if tyranny comes in, they might come after me? Oh, my God, you just told me. You just told me they might come, they might come after me. I'm quitting. I'm giving up. You mean? Oh my gosh! I never thought in 21 years on air that there might be repercussions if we don't stop this. <gasps> I'm giving up. That caller just scared me. I never thought of that. Oh my gosh! I always love. I'm not saying he was doing that, but I've gotten that before. Like you know they're going to come after you. You know the you know they kill people. Really? I, but see, that's from the mindset of folks that think like that. That well, you know, you know, the civilization is going to totally collapse. If we don't stand against this. You know, they're selling babies' parts everywhere. You know, they're dehumanizing us. You know, they're cross species. You know, the planet's dying, right? Because the globalist, not their fake environmental stuff, but real reasons. You know, we don't have any future if we don't stand up. But see, you don't have any sense of that. It's all about you. I, I'm an individual, such an individual. I'm a collectivist. I believe in individualism, but I'm collectively want to die in the service of humanity. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and we're going to take a look at Hillary Clinton's uh, email scandals, which we've been looking at for the last several days. We're going to talk to some of our callers as well. And I want to catch up on what's going on politically with the Veep Stakes. Uh, Veep Stakes, of course. We've had uh, Newt Gingrich speaking with Donald Trump today. We had Joni Ernst and Governor Pence meet with him over the weekend. And today we had Joni Ernst say that she has a lot more to do in the Senate. And quite frankly, I think that's good news, as long as she can't do what she wants to do. Because as I tweeted out over the weekend, as Donald Trump was talking about uh, meeting with her, I tweeted out something she put out a year ago. Senator Joni Ernst, who was a brand new senator at the time, said, I am pleased that TPA is one step closer to implementation. TPA, of course, is the Trade Promotion Authority. And understand, it's not simply about the TPP or the TTIP, the Transatlantic, the Trans-Pacific, quote-unquote, partnerships. They're really treaties, folks. And I cannot believe that a senator doesn't know that these are treaties, doesn't know and doesn't care that there is a process for ratifying treaties in the Constitution. But, of course, the majority of senators, virtually all of them, and the vast majority of the House, the majority of Republicans in both houses, voted to ignore the constitutional process that they are bound to follow and said, we're not going to follow that. We're not going to have two-thirds of the senators vote on these trade treaties. Instead, what we're going to do is negotiate them in secret with corporate lawyers, and then we're going to put it up to a majority vote in both houses. We're not going to allow any amendments. We're not going to allow any debates. We are not going to allow any uh, uh, filibusters. It's going to come to a vote in uh, 20 hours. Uh, so you can't change what we do. You can't talk about it. You can't delay it. We're just going to run this thing through, and we're going to let the president then sign it. Okay, that's the process that she was pleased was one step closer to implementation. What a lot of people call Obama trade. I just call it flat-out treason. Because if you openly say we're going to just ignore the Constitution on the process of treaty ratification, what else are you going to ignore it on? Well, quite frankly, everything, right? Just like they do it. Day-to-day uh, -day on the Bill of Rights. Now, she met with Donald Trump over the weekend, and then she comes back and she said, well, I made it very clear to him that I've got a lot more to do in the Senate. I'm focused on Iowa, blah, 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 okay? 
Uh, that's kind of like saying, you can't fire me, I quit. Now, hopefully, when they got together, Donald Trump realized that Joni Ernst was diametrically opposed to what he's basing his campaign on. And that is, uh, she wants to have the TPP, the trade partnership. When she talked to uh, the Iowa farmer today, back in March of this year, they said, what are the top issues for you right now? She talked about four of them. Uh, one of them was the Trans-Pacific Partnership. She said, it's a trade agreement. It's being discussed. I do think we'll get a chance to vote on it. I tend to be supportive of that bill. Well, Donald Trump has said uh, for the last 30 some odd years, he doesn't like NAFTA, he doesn't like the trade deals we're getting, and this is getting far, far worse with this. This is not even a, a trade deal. This is a loss of sovereignty, the management of our economy by an offshore cartel that is unaccountable to any nation state, okay? There's no democratic process involved in this. Senator Sessions, who's been the close advisor to Donald Trump, has explained this to him since last August. Joni Ernst is thoroughly in the tank for that. It's one of her top four priorities, she said, just back in March. Then she talked about something else that Donald Trump hasn't talked too much about, but certainly I don't like. And because she sees herself as the face of Big Agra, uh, she wants to push through uh, a GMO bill, the Dark Act, as we call it, which will basically shut down any state legislatures from saying we want to have our food label to know if it's got GMO in it. Exactly what you would expect from somebody coming from Iowa, where, which is a big corn producing state, which is where so much of the GMO products is coming from. They don't want you to know what you're eating. They don't want this label there. They're ashamed of it. They're embarrassed by it. They want to lie to you, just as Hillary Clinton does. And so it's a good thing, I think, that um, uh, there's been a uh, not a meeting of the minds. Uh, hopefully, uh, we're going to have the same type of thing uh, happening with some of these other candidates. I'm very concerned to see Newt Gingrich uh, cozying up so much to uh, Donald Trump, because Newt Gingrich is a thorough globalist. Also in uh, news, we see that Congress is going to summon the FBI director to explain why there's not going to be any charges brought before Clinton. Okay? And understand this. When we talked to Lionel yesterday, Leanne McAdoo and I interviewed him on the nightly news. And he made a very good point as a former prosecutor. We said, uh, oh, you know, he said um, no reasonable prosecutor would bring charges. Uh, well, here's a reasonable prosecutor, Lionel, because he actually believes... And the rule of law, even though he didn't want to see Hillary Clinton go to jail, even though he is supportive of some of the liberal issues, he has criticized SCOTUS and criticized this decision. He said, look, I used to be a prosecutor. This is like a police chief holding a press conference and saying, uh, district attorney, don't you dare indict this person. That's not the job of the police chief. He's supposed to be an investigator. Stay with us. We'll be right back with your calls. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight. Just want to remind you of the specials that we have. The 4th of July mega specials have been extended at InfoWarsStore.com. And, of course, those are 20% off Alexa Pure water filters, 20% off all Alexa Pure air filters, 20% off Survival Shield X2, which is selling out very quickly, and 20 to 40% off all InfoWars select storable food. That's a massive sale. 20% off Survival Shield X2 nascent iodine, the water filters, the air filters from Alexa Pure, as well as 20 to 40% off of InfoWars Select Storable Food. You'll find that at InfoWarsStore.com. Also, we do have the new Hillary for Prison t-shirt. Now more than ever, folks, Hillary for Prison. Uh, we sold out, and uh, we've got a new design in, an all-new version of Hillary for Prison t-shirt now live at InfoWarsStore.com. I'm going to go to the callers here in just one moment. I want to finish up uh, with what I was about to say about uh, Hillary Clinton and FBI Director Comey. He has been uh, told that uh, the Congress would like to talk to him tomorrow. They'd like to have a sit down and say, please explain to us the not only the double talk, but the double think behind saying that Hillary Clinton committed all these felonies, okay, 110 emails that were classified, he admits, that were sent and received as classified. And then, of course, there were thousands more they say were classified later. And we've talked about that, how if she has a conversation with another head of state, another uh, State Department official in another country, those are born classified. Now, she can start sending out emails about that right away before somebody in the State Department takes a look at the content and says, wait a minute. Uh, that should be secret, top secret, uh, above top secret. 
And that's the prevarication that she was allowed to get away with. But at the very least, he said, look, there's 110 of these things, okay? And when I heard this, I told my wife, I said, I can't believe it. He's going to indict her. But then he lays out the criminal charges and says, never mind, but don't you try this at home because we'll send you to jail. And we talked a little bit about some of the really egregious prosecutions that have happened with this. But they said today that they want FBI Director James Comey to go before Congress tomorrow to explain his decision that he's not recommending criminal charges. And again, as Lionel pointed out yesterday, a former prosecutor, why would the investigator tell the prosecutors, the judges, what to do? And he pointed out, he says, look, he's giving political cover to Loretta Lynch. He's saying nobody in their right mind would do it, so of course Loretta Lynch won't do it. They're covering for each other, folks. It's just disgusting to see this. And one of the things that was interesting was even Paul Ryan got in on this and said that Mrs. Clinton should be barred from receiving classified information. Now, all of you who are shaking your heads in derision and poo-pooing this on the left, let me just remind you, when this happened to uh, George, um, I'm sorry, to uh, Deutsch, John Deutsch, okay, he was the CIA director under Bill Clinton, and this was uh, like 20 years ago, right? It was 1995 to 96. When he left in 96... They found that he had taken documents home to his residence, to his office. He had them on a computer that was not secure. And they came after him very hard. And one of the things that they did was they suspended his clearance. Washington Post reported this back in August of 1999. And he didn't have a problem with it. Deutsch said at the time, he said, while serving as director of central intelligence, I erred in using CIA-issued computers that were not configured for classified work to compose classified documents and memoranda. He said, while it was absolutely necessary for me to work at home and while on travel, in hindsight, it's clear that I should have insisted that I be provided the means of accomplishing this work in a manner fully consistent with security rules. This is Bill Clinton's CIA director, who he subsequently had to pardon to keep the guy from going to jail. So clearly they know this. And so it's not out of line at all for Paul Ryan and others to say Hillary Clinton should be barred from handling classified information because she's extremely careless with it. I would say grossly negligent because that's basically the two of those things are indistinguishable from each other. Okay, that's a distinction without a difference to say that she's grossly negligent or extremely careless. And understand that uh, when the inspector general was looking at Deutsch and investigating him, he said uh, he criticized CIA officials because he said they didn't submit the reports on a timely basis. He said there's reasonable basis to believe that Deutsch's mishandling of classified information violated the standards prescribed and that it had the result of delaying a prompt and thorough investigation. Delayed? He was charged within 10 days. They didn't go in and say to his lawyers, would you please uh, review his personal effects and tell us which ones we're going to be allowed to see and which ones we're not going to be allowed to see as they did with Hillary Clinton. They didn't allow Deutsch, the former CIA director, to uh, have his lawyers delete in a way that can't be recovered information on his computer. No, they didn't do that. They afforded that protection, however, to Hillary Clinton. Just absolutely amazing. And real quickly, I want to play this clip, because last August I talked to Thomas Drake, and I think his case is one of the most egregious, because he was a whistleblower, one of the whistleblowers, but he was the one that they tried to put away, tried to put in jail. One of the people who came after him said to him, uh, you're screwed, Mr. Drake. We have enough evidence to put you away for most of the rest of your natural life. And Drake said, they'd made me into an enemy of the state just by saying that I was one because he was a whistleblower, because he had told the American public that the NSA was spying on us without a search warrant. They were doing dragnet surveillance of the American public. He believed the Constitution, and he believed the American people should be informed when their government violates that Constitution. And he went through a lot of channels uh, to do it properly, and Congress wasn't interested. Inter isn't that interesting? The Congress didn't care, okay? information eventually got out they came after him and he said this he said my public defenders filed a motion showing just how far and he said uh, uh, Bill Leonard had never seen such egregious violation of the classification standards that he used to lead 
Okay? So here's a guy who's defending him who used to set up these standards. And he said uh, all of the charging documents that they, they tried to send him to jail for 35 years, all of the documents they used to charge him, to indict him, he said all of those were unclassified. But the government had pretextually determined for their own convenience that they were highly classified. Here's a couple of examples. What a success. It was a document that was a subject of the first count. There's four documents, I believe. It was classified as secret on the day they found it in his house. It wasn't classified as secret before. Okay? But they indicted him for that. That was a document that was not transmitted or received as a classified document. But they wanted to hang him because he was a whistleblower, just like they've come after journalists, just like Obama has come after more people combined under the 1917 Espionage Act than all the previous presidents in this 100 years. So you've got an administration that has been more aggressive about this than any other administration, yet they let Hillary Clinton go. And here's one of the other documents that he had there. This was another one that was marked unclassified, and it was... A schedule of meetings about a project called Turbulence. Didn't say anything about the, uh, the project itself. It was a list of meetings that they'd had, and this project was finished, okay? They also posted it on the NSA's internal website. The government argued that the schedule should have been classified. So it's marked unclassified, and they said this should have been classified, and Drake, you should have known this should have been classified. So they don't say to Hillary Clinton, you should have known these conversations with other heads of state should have been classified. They don't say that to her. But they say that to him about a schedule of meetings. They said, this marked unclassified. They say, you should have known this is classified. And uh, we're going to put you away for the rest of your life. I want to play a quick, quick excerpt from uh, the interview I had with Thomas Drake last August. And so uh, they came after me with everything they had. And uh, ironically enough, it's the very documents that in whole or in part I had given to government investigators looking at Thin Thread, uh, Trailblazer, and 9-11 and intelligence. And they're all unclassified. And so ultimately, you know, they took them. They forced you know, forced classification uh, review, decided they were a super top secret, that uh, many of them would cause exceptionally grave damage to the United States of America, the Saturn Ask the United States if it was disclosed. And then it took them uh, from November 2007 all the way until April of 2010, now under Obama, not under Bush, but under Obama, to find a way to uh, indict me. And they indicted me under the 1917 World War I Air Espionage Act. And that's, of course, been a favorite of the Obama administration. He's indicted more people under that act than all the previous presidents for the past hundred years combined. Uh, Lanny, Lanny Brewer was the one who oversaw your prosecution. Of course, he was the one who let the banks uh, who were doing money laundering for drug cartels and terrorists, he let them go saying they were too big to jail. Yeah, that's a patriot right there, folks. Thomas Drake. He put everything on the line. He lost everything. He lost his job, his pension, uh, paid the financial price, almost went to jail for 35 years. And look at, again, documents that were marked unclassified. And they said, you should have known they should have been secret. And we're going to say that's the case. Uh, <laughs> it should have been secret, should have been high, more highly classified, and you should have known that. Another one that wasn't marked classified at all, and then they classified that day. And then they unclassified it uh, three months later. And as his trial came to uh, the day that it was supposed to begin, they dropped all the case, the uh, charges against him because it had become public. Let's go to uh, Joe and FEMA. Joe, you want to weigh in on this? Go ahead. FEMA too. Yesterday, Joe. watching watching Alex talk to Ron Paul, uh, trying to bring him over to Trump's, I guess, support or momentum. I noticed something about Ron Paul that was a little bit disturbing. I've been supporting him for years, and I'm a firm believer in Austrian economics, and I've also been to libertarian meetings up here in New York, and I won't digress on that. But anyway, <clears throat> when Alex hit Ron Paul point blank with uh, supporting Trump. I noticed, I really noticed Ron Paul going to a rant. Oh, he's all over the place. You never know what he's going to say. He flip flops. He changes his mind. Almost sounded like a woman. I don't, I don't mean that disrespectfully, but uh, I kind of think that it might be a good idea if you can get those two in a room together, perhaps, <laughs> because it's imperative yeah. that Donald Trump support of uh, Ron Paul. It's imperative, and I don't know what's going on with Ron Paul. 
I mean, I, I diligently supported him, watched him get shot down, watched yeah. the media laugh in his face, watched the, ma- the mainstream media laugh in his son's face, watched everybody degrade him, deplore him. And now here's a situation where I know, I understand it's a little bit different than the former of the Wall Street Economics and the, the uh, let's say, schooling that Ron Paul had, but... Donald Trump it happens to be somebody that can really help us. I don't necessarily agree with everything that he does. Well, I agree. But, I, I, I think that, uh, you know, when you look at the candidates, you're not going to find somebody that agrees with you on all points. Never. OK. And I understand there's a lot of points of disagreement between Ron Paul, between libertarians and between Donald Trump. I have those points of disagreement as well. But you have to also understand. And I would hope that Ron Paul would understand the vital issue before us right now where we do have a choice, and it may be a Hobson's choice, but it is still a choice. It's a clear choice, and that is globalism versus nationalism. As I've said before, as decisions are taken away from the individual and given to the local community, as they move from the local community to the state level, then from there to the national level, every time you go up another level, every time those decisions get more distant from the individual, it's harder and harder to get those things back. We're at the point right now where we've had so much of our decisions on our lives being made at the national level. They've intruded themselves into every aspect of our lives. And I have to say that if we now go from the national level to the international level, if we give up and surrender our sovereignty, and Ron Paul knows that NAFTA isn't free trade. I mean, we can have a debate about uh, the, uh, the abstract issues of free trade and Austrian economics and so forth, but it's not free trade. And Ron Paul has said that NAFTA is not free trade. He said you don't need a thousand-page agreement to have free trade. You just have free trade, right? You take down the barriers. But what it is is managed trade. And now what we're seeing is something that is many times larger than that. And it's not even economically based. But just if you look at the economics, I mean, of course, it, it controls our Internet freedoms and other issues. But even if you look at the economics, these decisions are going to be made uh, economically. They're going to control our economy. It's going to be made by an organization that is not accountable to us. As Senator Sessions has pointed out, it will be a living document, which means that whatever the 5,000 pages initially say, they can change it just like that. Okay. No input or questioning or control from us. And so I would think that that would be a big issue. To me, that's a key reason to vote for Donald Trump, even though I disagree with him on things like uh, terror, uh, torture and so forth and how they would prosecute the war on terror. But it, I, there are reasons, strong reasons, to vote against globalism. I mean, that is crony capitalism that we will never get back. I mean, do you agree? Yes, I do. I do. But I, I also think it's imperative that these two get together somehow and because they're fighting for the same thing. It might not be spelled out the same way, but meanwhile, it's their camp divided right now. And Donald Trump needs the momentum that Ron Paul could afford him if he just says, OK, you know, I understand this guy's not really my cup of tea, but it's better than Hillary. I mean, it's much better. Yeah. And uh, we can get them into a room together somehow, like. I don't know, two disputing couples or something. I don't know. Well, I don't know. I, and I don't, I don't know uh, what's going on in the Libertarian Party either. I mean, I'm looking at this article. Gary Johnson says Hillary is no criminal. And Gary Johnson comes out and says, I'm not a stone throw when it comes to Hillary Clinton or emails or server. I don't think there's been any criminal intent on Hillary Clinton's part. I don't see an indictment. It's like, really? I mean, Gary Johnson has become a stalking horse for Hillary Clinton. Since when? Does the rule of law not matter? Since when does the Constitution not matter? Since when do we have double standards for the big guys and the little guys, okay? Why is that not an issue for a libertarian? That was a core issue when I was involved in the Libertarian Party. We really did care about the rule of law. And it was interesting in this article, it was from the Libertarian Republic, they talk about a CNN town hall, and they did a, a word association game with uh, uh, Gary Johnson and William Weld, who's running with him, and they threw out a, and said, Hillary Clinton, and Johnson comes back and says, a wonderful public servant. Really? I mean, who else, who else would say this? I, absolutely amazing. Bill Dwell says old friend, and then says, we have a lifelong bond, okay? Then they throw out Obama's name, and Johnson says, good guy. Weld says, statesmanlike. You know what I think? I think the real word association would be when they throw out names like Hillary Clinton and Obama, it would be Goldman Sachs, ka-ching, ka-ching. 
Here's where my payoff comes. Here's where I get the money from the Koch brothers and Goldman Sachs. Here's where I get my government subsidy if I get above 5%. I, I'm really disgusted with the Libertarian Party. And I got to say that at the same time, I've seen the Green Party, with whom I agree with virtually nothing, have the integrity to come out. Uh, this is Jill Stein says uh, that... The, uh, that Hillary Clinton should be prosecuted. She said all the elements necessary to prove felony violation were found by the FBI investigation and then listed by Comey. She said her staff has said Secretary Clinton stated she will use her private email system because she didn't want her personal emails to become accessible. She said this is damning on two counts, Jill Stein said, that she intended to disregard the protection of security information and that she had personal business to conceal. Look. I totally disagree with her. There's much that I would agree with on policy with the Libertarian Party, not necessarily Gary Johnson. But we've got to start with integrity. If the people are crooks, we don't have any. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight. We have a couple of callers who called in about Guccifer. Evidently, there's some reports online. We haven't been able to verify those yet that Guccifer uh, died in jail. Uh, of course, Guccifer was the uh, hacker who broke in, I actually, I think it was uh, one of the, the first indications of Hillary Clinton's private emails, but he also got uh, Bush, Colin Powell, Tony Blair, talking about uh, the Bohemian Grove and so forth and so on. Uh, he, he's not even an engineer, software engineer. Uh, this is a guy who just made educated guesses at passwords and worked his way in and got these uh, emails. It really does underscore just how vulnerable Hillary Clinton's emails were. And it underscores why... We should not have this double standard, folks. Everything that our government has done for the last 15 years has been in the name of the security state. And they have eviscerated the rule of law. They have eviscerated the Constitution in the name of the security state to keep us safe. And yet she has information that is above top secret. Information that not only gives private conversations about people, but also puts uh, people in the field, puts their lives directly at risk. And she walks how can they, with a straight face anymore, continue to violate our Constitution? Okay, they can't even make the weak case that they made before. Real quickly, just want to remind you, we have 20% off Survival Shield X2, all Alexa Pure water filters, all Alexa Pure air filters. Uh, that's an extension of the July 4th mega specials. And we have 20 to 40% off all InfoWars Select storable food. Now, let me go to uh, one of the callers about Guccifer, uh, Mike in New Mexico. Go ahead, Mike. What do you know about this and what's your source? How's it going, Dave? Um, I just uh, heard about that last night and I was trying to figure a way to talk to you guys, but uh, I don't know if it's true or not, uh, but I haven't seen anything really just proving it, but it said something along the lines of uh, he was missing, and then he, they found him, and he had committed suicide, and I just thought I would hear Alex was, and Raven about it. Was, was he, uh, I did one, what, did he, was he lifting weights? Did he drop like a, a dumbbell on his neck or something like that? You an ambassador oh, that was going to embarrass Hillary Clinton? I mean, we've got, it, it's, you know, it is believable that something like this could happen because he was at the center of all of this, but uh, I, I can't verify that it has yet. Go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to tell everyone, too, if, uh, if you guys haven't tried the products yet, you don't know what you're missing. I tried them uh, three years ago. started with the nascent iodine. Uh, now I'm using the X2. I've tried the Super Male, the D3. The tangy tangerine, um, I know the mineral fusions are real similar to tangy tangerine. The brain force, the silver bullet, water filter, oxytotter. I mean, those things have changed my life. Uh, more energy, I feel better, I'm more positive in general. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's what I was well, trying thanks, to call and just talk about that. Well, I'm glad to hear that, that it's working for you. I tell you what, I do it and it works for me. And there's a limit as to what I can say. But I, I certainly, uh, it is something we do our best to offer you the best quality products. And that's the way we fund our operations. It's what keeps us independent. So we're not at the mercy of someone who can pull the rug out from under us if they don't like uh, a report that we did. So that's the way you keep the information free. That's the way you uh, provide for your own health and that of your family as well. Thank you so much for letting us know that. Um, let's go to uh, Colin in Oklahoma. Colin. Uh, you've been holding for a while. Go ahead. We've only got a couple of minutes left. Real quick. Yeah, hi, David. Hey. Um, my biggest thing is about all this that I haven't heard anybody really bringing up yet. Um, there's the possibility of Hillary actually getting into the White House becomes more and more of a, a likelihood. People are, you know, myself and every, everybody in my neck of the woods. And we got about 30 seconds. Guys and everything. Go quick. Um, I'm, people don't know what to do. Leave the country is definitely not an option for me. I think state secession, going to what you said before about 
everything moving away from the individual, I think the state is yeah. you know, where we need to get our rights back, first of all. And well, that's right. saying that. I think the seed. And I agree. I think I think the play at this point is to try to stop it from getting more consolidated and then try to work at the grassroots level. Jury nullification, state nullification, get our freedom back that way. I agree. Join us tonight, 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern, for the InfoWars Nightly News. Jakari Jackson will be hosting.